What's up, boys and girls? This is Lance Hoyt, a.k.a. Lance Archer, the American psycho of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and you are listening to WNS Podcast. You are listening to the official Wrestling News Source Podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsSource.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast or WNS Podcast. Now being broadcast in over 45 different countries, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler A. Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler Aber. I'm Doug. And we welcome you to episode 189 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. We are also on Stitcher, Player.fm, and Beyond Pod. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Uh, follow us on Twitter at WNS Podcast. You can follow Daniel at WNS underscore Daniel. And you can follow Tyler at Tyler. Nope. Still not tweeting yet. It's a little shy of, what was it, 200 followers that we were asking for? A million. A million? God, we're never going to reach that goal. What are you up to right now? Well, Miller Bust. Uh, I don't know. Some guy, I forgot. Sorry. I, I just got like a, a message on my phone and I was at work. But if I forget your name, I'm sorry. I don't really remember. But uh, he was like, uh, wake your ass up. Someone said, wake your ass up. So. So the people are, are responding to you, trying to get you to tweet, but uh, it's going to take a while. We're going to take, we're gonna, we need to spread the word, no. <laughs> tweeting a Hey, I've tried to find out how to delete my thing off my phone. I can't. It won't uh, let really? me deactivate my account, because oh. I would. Oh, No more A-Bear? Would you take over the MF Butthole account? No. I no? Would not. I think I forgot the password. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to forget MF the Butthole is lost forever. No! Sad times. I've created so many fake accounts <laughs> that I can't remember the password. That's why you write them down. We didn't know it was MF Butthole. And do you remember the time we thought we were going to change Tyler's? If he didn't start tweeting, we are going to start uh, changing him to B plus Bear. I got like at B plus Bear. <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember the password of that. That's awesome. I, I didn't. Man, we should have rolled with that. <laughs> you could be Tyler for me. B plus Bear. Yeah? There you go. Let's see. What? We'll have to see. I want to. I want to see how much you're up to right now. You're currently, drum roll, at 33 followers. Yay! So, a little shy. Yeah. Of your one million, but it, close. It's, it's still possible. I mean, if if my followers were to follow you, then how many followers do you have? Uh, currently 165. Oh. So, getting up there. Maybe. <laughs> See, that's why I said it's like if it was the goal was 200 or something, you know, maybe. But one million is kind of a stretch. No. No? Okay. It's a stretch of the imagination. It is. Unfeasible. So uh, so welcome to the show. Got a lot to talk about. Going to dive into some feedback, talk about SummerSlam, talk about Raw. Uh, no Q&A this, uh, this week. We do what? have some hot topics, though. I know. Uh, you, know you would think that we'd get something from Mr. Drop It Low, son. but um, stuff to do, okay? He's, he's been doing the celebrity route, man. He's been going on tour, getting uh, interviews and stuff Lucky like that. Lucky bastard. Yeah. Getting a makeover for reasons he was not Don't sure. Don't worry. I will, I will be he like that He got a once. makeover? Yeah. Like... He went to the news, like yeah. you know, they interviewed him, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna give you a full makeover with all." I hope they didn't cut his hair. He's got nice hair. I hope they don't cut it. Yeah, don't let him change you. So uh, he's, he's. I watched that little uh, video or whatever he was on the news. Yeah. It's pretty cool. cool I can stuff. picture him. I know him no walking in the library and opening the book and then putting the book back. And yeah, no one's gonna see this in the studio, but I can picture him, put him in the suit, and he's doing that. <laughs> Doing that. Yeah? Yeah, I can picture him doing that. I mean, now I can. There you go. I put that in your brain. <laughs> How about you, Doug? Can you picture Thomas doing that dance? I don't I don't get the reference. I don't know why what I don't know what I'm missing. I forgot what it's from though. Uh, Is it from a TV show or a movie or yeah, Doctor Who? Sure. No, <laughs> nothing close to that. I can't think of it. Or maybe it's from a movie. Hmm. I don't know. What's that? That one dance that everyone's doing. It's like they'll like jump up and go like this or whatever. 
You seen that? I have not. I don't know. Maybe I just like watch too much vines. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what you're doing. You're switching. You're switching from Twitter to Vine. Are you vining now? He's no, once I get if I can do some videos, I want to start vining. He wants, but I've I've been watching a lot of vines. It's attached to your Twitter then, so don't delete your Twitter. But there's uh, okay. This is off of the wrestling subject. If yeah. anyone can help me with this, <laughs> I want to start vining all that stuff. But the things I've seen from vines. It looks like it's more than just your phone that you use it, unless you right. download a program. A lot of them were like, I don't know how they. Do I don't know some how they that. do certain things, but I would like to like how they cut clips and like do. There's this one person who's like, uh, it was two people. It was and a they short had guy. music in the background. Yes, yeah, so there's a short guy. He goes up to him. He's like real life Mario. He eats like a mushroom and like it shows this person like kind of as a special effects mm-hmm. he grew up into and like another person or whatever and like he's like ah oh. you know he's freaked out right like how did you do that. I think Vine is old news now, though. I think people are using the video on Instagram in place of what people were using Vine for. Well, I think they use the video option on People Instagram. do Vine, but if they want to do the extended version, if people want to see the extended stuff, they put it on Instagram. Because hmm. I've I, there's about 13 or 14 people I follow on Vine. I have nothing to share. I just like watching it. Yeah. You know, are you and, at Tyler and Scraver on Vine? And it's Hebert. I just it's broke what? the wall. I just broke the wall. He bear. <laughs> <laughs> what? No one knows that. No one knows what exactly. So, uh, but I'll change everything if I can get some stuff started up or whatever. But I, you're gonna have to. I don't know exactly if you have to. You're do looking it for phone. suggestions. I need someone to help me so I can get started. If I need oh, okay. a camera, because I know you can start filming things well, on I got your a camera. Phone, but I don't know how to. You you let me know what you need to do. Do you have we the app or whatever? Yeah, I have the app. Can't you just? Don't you just like uh, film and like pause and then. Move your shit around however you want and continue. Is, I don't guess. Know like that. But there's certain things that like confuse me. I was like, how can you do that? I didn't know if that's what you could do in the program. I'll show you later on. But I had the I download before I got my new phone. I downloaded the app on the old phone. I never used it though because I, I mean, like that's something I'm super interested in. I just want to do like goofy stuff, and I don't care if people like it or not. I just want to throw it out there and see. Yeah. See Why don't you use the Instagram, uh, the video on Instagram? Because that seems more self-explanatory. It's I only guess, like fi- it's guess. only fifteen seconds, right? Instagram's only fifteen seconds. Or what's Vine? Vine's what seven or eight seconds? I don't know. Or this is enthralling. You for could listening. go even further and get like thirty seconds and use Tout. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one doing goofy <laughs> stuff on Tout. Like everyone's like, "What's Tout?" Like, <laughs> Tout's a dead scene though. Tout is very dead. Yeah, but you could you could revitalize. You could give Tout the renaissance. You could be the hope. That tout needs. I don't even know where to begin with that, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to lift this dead horse off the road, but it's not moving. <laughs> so you just beat it with a wooden stick. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Everyone's coming back. You're hey, the horse, the horse yeah. with a stick. But okay, off the subject. That's that's what I'm thinking of. But. Get your social media presence in high gear, Tyler. Come on. Yeah, you can do this. We have faith in you. Yeah, I've thought of. St- we need to do is I thought of some stupid skits. But. Get like a notepad, write down all of your ideas, and then one day we'll just crank them all out, and uh, we'll see what we can do as far as like editing software and uh, sound effects and music and all that. Oh, I would love to. <clears throat> I know this is, this is a big ass goal, but I've seen some people like, off of seven second vines. Mm-hmm. I know this is the vines section we're talking about on the right. wrestling podcast. Sorry, but like <laughs> you can get sponsored. It's not like that'd be cool, but I just want to throw not out only are stuff. we talking about like all the stuff they're pro- we're probably got it all wrong and people are like, that's not how it <laughs> fucking works. You I know, I know, but like there's some guys that like that, that got sponsored to do something like for Coca-Cola or for yeah. other little things and you can get up to depending which company you can earn up to like Per vine, a thousand dollars or like ten thousand for each thing. Like, I'm like, Damn. holy shit! Yeah, you gotta get famous, man. Yeah. To, oh, you got one million. We followers. gotta ride your coattails. <laughs> one million followers and stuff like that, and it's just, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. I just, I think it would be fun to do this stuff. There's Dang. no, there's no excuse for you to not be using your social media presence. Yeah. Probably. Use the power of influence that you have. Yep. The ladies love you. Well, once I get stuff going on, I'm gonna uh, pimp it a little bit on here. Maybe some people yeah. that go See, off. See, there you go. Start getting, once it get, start once getting, I start doing stuff, like you could help me with the technical, I guess, mm-hmm. stuff. Like start getting some ideas, and we'll see what we can do. We'll go from there. We're here to help you, Aver. I just been so like watching vines, and there's some funny ass people on there. Yeah, good stuff. And uh, you know, if seven seconds or how many seconds is it? 
seven, seven or, six. or six or something like that. And if that's not enough, we'll move into YouTube. So yeah. we can we can do full on skits. So yeah. you just you let me know. We'll we'll get we'll make this happen, man. Uh, there you go. So uh, so let's dive on into some feedback that we got. First bit is from our buddy John David Guerra saying it's not popular opinion, but I'm not a Roman Reigns fan. Uh, he needs a lot of work, but I can also see what WWE sees in him. It will be interesting to see if the fans will turn on him if he does not get better soon. All big. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I, I agree with Doug that a face hero uh, looks better trying to do good than not attempting to do anything at all. Uh, this was bothering me too, actually. Um, interesting Del Rio theory makes sense to me. Another great show, guys. Thanks for the shout out. Well, there you go. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thanks, man. And keep up the great yeah, work. Yeah, keep for up you the great work. Well. You know that we all love your work. <laughs> yeah. We're, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be bugging here him, him soon. Probably my next paycheck or two somewhere around there. Well, maybe not that soon. But get some good stuff down the line, and uh, yeah, I'll get some get some new artwork for us. Maybe something for our Facebook cover of just like the three of us. That'd be pretty cool. Um, Pick up some of his other great print prints. Yeah, really cool prints. The Monday Night Draw getting featured on WWE.com a lot too. A lot the of the, art, yeah. A lot of the uh, people tweeting I know it. I know I've seen it at least about five times. I think. Very cool. That's someone will post on Facebook. Yeah. So good stuff from him. Go to NightmareProWrestling.com to check out all that stuff. Uh, he actually had a sale um, 20% off during the SummerSlam weekend. So uh, so if you're a fan of his on Facebook, uh, then you get notifications about that. Uh, next bit of feedback we have is from our buddy Occam City saying, Hey guys, great show. I don't see where they can go with Roman Reigns leading in. Or I don't see where, yeah, I don't see where they can go with Reigns leading into Mania, Mania next year. Uh, he obviously wins the Rumble, but he can lose his momentum with the fans leading up to the Rumble because of lack of credible heels. I think a good way to save Cesaro is to align him with the Authority stable by saving Rollins from Ambrose, and then you can have him have him feud with Reigns leading into the Rumble. I got excited when I saw the stable with Big E, Woods, and Kingston. Disappointed that WWE didn't give them a shot, taking into account Woods is in uh, purgatory on the roster. Big E has disappeared uh, for the most part since the feud with Rusev, and Kingston is the stale gimmicky guy. Uh, and Guardians was great. Guardians of the Galaxy was a great movie. Had the best experience watching it on a recent trip to South Korea in 4D with moving seats, wind, water, mist, and a few smellow vision spots. Uh uh, really? That's awesome. That's legit. That sounds uh, that sounds pretty neat. I think it, like yeah. uh, at Disney World, I saw some like they did something like that where they like propel like smells at you and like uh, yeah. I forget um, what it was, but I, I, I assume that's the same. I, I guess went, that's what 4D is. When I went when I was little. Uh, we went to Universal Studios, and they had the uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, mm -hmm. like a play off of Honey, I, Sh Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And they had they had stuff like that. Like they had like, you know, little rubber mice or something like that that ran underneath the seats. And so like, you know, you see it on the screen, and then they disappear, and all of a sudden they're underneath you. You're, oh, God, you know. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. South Korea, man, our, our – uh... Our listener base is becoming like really well traveled, like in forty five different countries. Didn't Losin just go somewhere? Occam yeah. City is going to South Korea. That's that's pretty. Everyone's cool. Everyone's traveling, and we're just sitting here doing our show. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Though. On the road again. I travel to the next town over. Yeah, go to Louisiana. Let's go to the casino. Hit up a few slots. Loose uh, sluts or slots. Slots. I'm gonna uh, lose some money. Yeah. At the casino. So what we need to do, let's just take 40 bucks, go to the casino, and have a good night. You play the tables, not the slots. Oh, I play the penny slots. Play tables. You sit there with 20 bucks at the penny slots, you can be there for a couple hours, and it's a Depends. lot of fun. It does depend how much you're wagering, so if you get a good machine or not. So, yeah, we need to do that one weekend. Like on a Saturday night, just get in the vehicle. You remember what I told y'all about that time I went to the casino, and there was like this, I went into like the, uh the rich part or whatever oh, like yeah. the, and like there's this table uh and then people were all standing around and everyone's like i guess i, I assume that that was their friends or whatever and mm -hmm. like something happened they're like yeah and i go up there i was like yeah you know <laughs> with them all i know it's random join but, in yeah. yeah join in the celebration have fun i get actually a high five someone yeah yeah <laughs> they didn't question it. They just turned around. I was like, okay. So what you do up. is once you get to the casino, you order a drink, and you just walk around with that. And that way, no matter what you do, you can just be like, yeah, and you hold your drink in the air. And people are like, oh, dude, he's just drunk. He's just having a good time. Don't worry about him. He's fine. So uh, 
So the last bit of feedback we have is from Jaggy Bab saying, love the show, but if you do this every week, shouldn't Tyler really watch the show? I'll, I'll, before, I know you'd like to address, but I'd like to address it first. Let, or, yeah, go ahead. Let Tyler speak for himself. Or okay. Geez. Yeah. You're okay. That's a, that's, You're a valid, a that's a valid point. Uh, Jaggy Babs. Jaggy Babs. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> it just sounds so ridiculous. Uh, I'm not to cut you off for the point. It's just so awesome that you're like, that's a valid point. Jackie Bass. <laughs> okay. We've been doing this, what? Almost four years. Four years. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to make an excuse, but like, I love doing this podcast, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm burnt out at the point where I'm right now. So at times, and I, and this sounds bad. There's sometimes if I'm not joined, I turn it off yeah. or I do something else. And I hate to be like that. And I shouldn't because I do a podcast. And I'm trying <laughs> to figure out a way to like get myself back into it. I'm just, I'm just burnt out. I really am. And I know like, oh, if you're burnt out, why are you doing this podcast? I'm like, I don't want to leave. And I don't want to be like, a, I don't want to be like, hey, I'm like, you have these two guys talking about wrestling. You have this third guy that's there. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to be that. You know, I'm, I'm still in the process of trying to get back into you know yeah. i watch it but i'm like okay is there something that's just unappealing at the moment or like is it a particular storyline or is it just in in general do you, like are you just tired of watching wrestling at the moment uh sometimes i feel like that yeah I, like that. I mean we've all been through that i you know there have been times where i didn't want to watch raw and i'm just like oh you know i'm just not really in the mood not paying attention and you know i'm just kind of just sitting there so there's nothing wrong with that we all you know everyone gets burned out um I'm just, I'm just, you know. So I apologize to everyone who, you know, feels that way, you know, and I'm going to get back to it. It just may take a little bit. Nah, you don't have to. I don't think you have to apologize. You know, every, everyone gets burnt out on, on doing something every single week for, you know, four years. That's just a long time. You know, you, there are days where you don't want to go to work, you know, and we all work full time, full time jobs. So, to, to take time out of our day, out of the free time that we have to, to come and do this show. You know, not to mention to dedicate to watching wrestling, to watch the pay-per-view, then watch Raw, then come and talk about it. Uh, you know, that's taking up a lot of free time. So, But, you know, I did watch the pay-per-view. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get to dive into that. But, uh, but yeah, no, don't worry about it. Um, so, Doug, I'm sure at one point or another, you've, have, have you gotten tired of uh, watching wrestling? Well, I mean, I, I do want to speak about uh, uh about Tyler. Just I just want not that uh, I'm just throwing my own two cents in about Tyler. Uh, the short answer to it was the Jaggy Babs. Jaggy Babs. Jaggy Babs. That's a funny name. Sorry, <laughs> it, just, it just comes off the tongue funny. Yeah. Uh, the short answer to should Tyler be watching Raw if we're gonna do a podcast every week is yes, he should, but. I mean, I kind of know that Tyler has been burned out for a while because I feel like he and I have had talks about it and discussions about it. And how I feel is that um, well, if Tyler is watching the show or not, for my own personal level of enjoyment, like Tyler makes this show more fun for me to do. And I feel like he adds, even, whether he watches or not, I feel like he adds something to the show that could not be added from anybody else. So I would, I'm always hesitant to pressure him. Not that I, not that I'm like saying, Tyler, here's your free pass to never watch Raw again. I'm not <laughs> saying that, and I'm also not saying this as pressure to make you watch Raw. I mean, like, do what you're gonna do, but um, I would never want him to feel pressure because I would never want him to to just be like, fuck it, I don't want to do the show anymore. Right. And because uh, you never know, like, if you push. Right towards something, it's going to end up pushing them because, away. Yeah, I mean, because Tyler's not required to do this; he's right. here because he wants to be. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm not speaking. And I, I, for a little while, I was sort of scared that Tyler was going to quit because I knew that he was burned out and he didn't want to do it. And uh, if we pushed him too hard, I kind of felt like we would have pushed him away. But we didn't. I think we just kind of let him do his own thing. I think yeah. that was for the best. Yeah, and, uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to leave y'all hanging, you know. And well, my thing is this: like, and I don't want to speak for Daniel. But I will speak for myself in that I'm not saying that the show wouldn't go on if Tyler was to decide he would quit one day or something. But I know that there aren't that many other people in the world that I would rather do this show with than Tyler. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like if he, I feel like we would suffer as a two-man show. 
I feel like it would lose a lot of what we are if Tyler quit. Yep. Even if we got a replacement. And uh, so, it's Jaggy Babs, you are right. You're right to say that. But, uh, you know, for me, for my own personal interest in this show, I would rather have Tyler here than him not be here. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, like, you know, there are weeks where we get sick and, you know, hey, guys, I can't come in this week. Okay, let's see if, you know, maybe Ryan or something can come in. But eventually... Uh, what it essentially comes down to is that this is the core, you know, mm-hmm. not the Heath Slater version, but this is this is our groove. This is our unit, uh, you know, and and if Doug's not here or if Tyler's not here, it, we are incomplete. Yeah. Um. So whether you watched it or not, that, you know, that's a distant second of of the the point of the show. The point of the show is three guys who like wrestling come in and talk about it. If you yeah. didn't watch it, you know, we'll cover it and, you know. You add on. You and know, you add on where you, where you add can. Or ask questions yeah, or it has, how you feel. It has nothing to do with responsibility. <clears throat> this is not a responsibility. We're not required to do this show. Yeah. This We're is not. something we do out of hobby and because it's something that we like to We're do. also not, we also don't want to come across like we're bitching about right. having to do the show. That's not the case either. No, right. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It's just that. I mean, my fear was that Tyler was going to leave, and my fear, like, I would just rather him be around in any in any situation than not be around. Mm-hmm. I feel like whether Tyler watched Raw or not, I feel like Tyler is, like, an integral part of our show. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds weird that whether he watched what we're talking about or not, but he is an integral part of the show regardless. So. And the ladies love him. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I don't even know if she's still around. And Ben still loves you. Yeah, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies love Cool James. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys, and yeah. Also, tell her I, uh, we love you, but that's not a free pass. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's not me saying it's cool if you don't ever watch Raw again. It's also not me saying like uh, you have to watch. This you show. have to watch Raw. It's... I understand. Yeah, I totally understand. <laughs> so, uh, so with that being said, let's dive on into what happened on SummerSlam this past Sunday. All three of us got together, including Ryan. Uh, my girlfriend, a couple of her friends came over as well. Had a good time. Yeah. Got some Raisin Cane's chicken. Very good stuff. That sauce. I forgot the sauce, by you the way. You left that sauce. And you ate it. I not, have you not. Like, I have not. I did not eat it. You put it in the refrigerator, huh? I was tempted to. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, we had SummerSlam. We got a kickoff match um, announced. I forget when, but, you know, it was sort of a last-minute deal um, with uh, RVD going up against Cesaro. Actually, I thought... This wasn't that bad of a match. Yeah, it was a good. Hey, let's I don't warm up the crowd. Understand the ending part. Yeah, I don't know why Rob Van Dam got the win. In my opinion, but it was still pretty cool. There's some cool spots, man. I love that uh, Cesaro did the Rolling Thunder into a chest stomp. <laughs> yes, it was. It was sweet. Yeah, that that was really nice. Uh, the European uppercuts while RVD was on the uh, on the top turnbuckle was nice to see as well. Yeah. Uh, they had good chemistry with one another, yeah. so uh, so that was always nice. Uh, yeah, it was pretty questionable for RVD to get the win. I mean, yeah, he's probably, uh, you know, there's talks that he's about to step out the door for a while, you know, take his time off. Because um, Jericho's back. Yeah, because Jericho's back for the time being, uh, although he's probably going to be leaving here pretty soon as well. Jericho again? I think. Quickly? I don't know. I'll have to see. Um, I think... I think they said they, they'll be both be gone. Bring Batista back. Well, I think they said that they're gonna uh, they're gonna settle this one on one between uh, Chris Jericho and Bray Wyatt since they both have a win in a pay per view. Uh, so they'll yeah. settle that at like Night of Champions, and then uh, then Jericho will take some time off. Night of Champions. When's that? Next? September twenty first. I think. It just seemed like Jericho just got back. Yep. It's getting shorter each time. Shorter. Yep. Okay, hey guys, I'm done with WWE. WWE. <laughs> but guess what? I'm back. And now I'm going again. So, uh, so yeah, but RVD ends up getting the victory um, to not too bad of a matchup. But uh, the, f- the first matchup of the pay-per-view, uh, Dolph Ziggler going up against The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, I believe all three of us picked The Miz on this one to win. Yeah. Um, kind of a shocking outcome with Dolph Ziggler getting the win. <laughs> for you. For, for me? Yeah, I was like, uh, <laughs> sorry, that just goes back to me being blah about the whole situation. It's like, yeah, like even what I said in the predictions, I'm like, 
I really wanted to uh, the vacate the title or whatever. Yeah. But I know that would never happen, but I was <laughs> like, that's cool that he won. But still, to me, I'm like, ah, okay. Oh, well. <laughs> Whoever wins, who cares? <laughs> kind of. That puts, I guess, Dolph more in the spotlight. Yeah. Than he was. And like, ah, good for him. Yeah. Don't care. And he mentioned on I Raw. I hate to be like that. I really do. And he mentioned on Raw, he was like, you know, this is because of you guys. You guys, you know, talking to the fans, of course. Uh, you're the reason why I'm holding this It's been title. a while since he's had a title, I think, right? Yeah. So, uh, Doug, what do you think about the Dolph Ziggler and Miz match? Uh, well, I really only saw the finish. Oh, I came in late. That's right. Because uh, Mr. LL Cool, <coughs> cool James had me stop at the store to pick up candy. It's some candy. Well worth it. It was good candy. It was good candy. <laughs> well, you told me... He told me like after six, and I was the only place to stop between my place and like Aww. Daniel's was uh, Walmart, and it was a fucking. <sighs> man. Sorry, man. Oh, that's all good. Could have just stopped at like gas station or something. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't feel like they'd have a selection. Oh, yeah, that's true. It is kind of iffy. Boy, wait, wait. I only meant- take the candy home. Did you leave it there? You left. I uh, left it, and I ate it. And oh, it was good. I only saw the finish, so I can't speak worry, to the match. But uh, they were just like three Sour Patch Kids and those little root beer bottles. I am surprised with uh, the title change. Um, doesn't make a lot of sense to me to bring Miz back, freshen up his gimmick. Yeah, I know, right? Put the belt on him just to take Whoa. it off like a month later. You say freshen up his gimmick? Well, they're they're trying. Hollywood star, the money, a little bit. Yeah, I Don't know they're trying. Yeah, I got. The, yeah. I mean, they're at least trying some things. I mean, I guess something like that is better than nothing. I mean, it continues the feud. Sure, but I mean, I, I don't know, like, uh, why bring Miz back? Yeah. Why yeah. freshen up his gimmick? Why put the belt on him? And Unless, I mean, if they him? were going to be like, hey, uh, if they push the feud mo- like a little more, like he still won the belt, but they still go on, and maybe, like, the next pay-per-view, maybe he win it, or maybe the next one. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a fine spot for Ziggler to be in. I just mm-hmm. don't. I just I just don't understand the logic of uh, doing what they did with the Miz just to take the belt off of him. Yeah, just uh, hey, we're gonna make the fans happy for a little bit. Ziggler, you get the title. So, but the feud's still going. So, um, I mean, it was a it was a solid opener. Um, nothing really to to you know go oh my gosh about, but it was a it was a good start. Uh, the next matchup we got to see was the Divas Championship: AJ Lee versus Paige. Um, this match. Um, had some good spots, had some good action. Uh, another, you know, kind of shocking end, at least to us, uh, with Paige getting the victory, becoming the new Divas champion. Um, what did you guys think about this matchup? I thought it was pretty good. <clears throat> I thought it was easily their best match together. Mm-hmm. And I think it was easily Paige's best match since being called up to the main roster. I'll agree to that. How about you, Tyler? Um, I don't know. Like, I remember parts of it. But um, good finish. Like AJ was going for her submission, and Paige turned it into that finisher. Yeah, I like that. I just uh, <clears throat> I think I remember the most my reaction at the end. I was like, wow, yeah, two title changes, two matches, yeah. two titles changing hands, and uh, I like the spot where AJ at least dove from the from the top turnbuckle onto the floor because it shows like these two are actually willing to put on a match, not just do a two minute divas. Let's you know, bounce on the rope and throw an elbow kind of stuff. Like, these yeah. two actually went at it. Um, and I like that. Um, you know, shows them have a little more power, yeah. I guess. But uh, but Paige ended up getting the victory. Um, shocking to all of us, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, so not too bad. That will continue the feud. Yes, that does good indeed. Uh, next up, we got to see Rusev going up against Jack Swagger in a flag match. Um I guess it, since they didn't say it was flag on a pole match. That's what I assumed it was, a flag yeah. on a pole match. Like, I, I thought, yeah, flag on a pole or a flag yeah. at the end, you, you have to plant your flag. Yeah, that's, I mean. That's what I assumed. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I was thinking as well, because they, like, they weren't exactly clear as far as what was going to happen. And so I was I like. I think that was by design. I think they were keeping their options open. There. Yeah. Uh, you know, or like, it could have been like because this was just a match in which the winner got to display their flag. Yeah, yeah. Like you would like. Would it make more sense to say if they were going by the rules, flag versus flag match? And like where, you support you use the flag. Well, yeah, but it's like, <coughs> I like which flag's gonna win? Or like which person's gonna just, win? Which represent? Just the mention of a flag match, 
um, gives you the idea that it's a capture of the flag type scenario. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you just they had a match and the winner got to to wave their flag. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that was it. Mm. And right. which was also shocking, you know, the end part like Rusev went. Yeah, another uh... which is weird to me. Well, it's not. Had I known this was a straight up match, I would have picked a Rusev. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because he's clearly the guy that's getting pushed, and we even spoke about this last month. And I, 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 I remember saying that people were high on Swagger's push, but I, I, I was clear that they were just fattening him up to lead to slaughter for Rusev. Like Rusev's clearly right. the guy that's getting pushed. The the reason we made the call for Swagger is because that's a way to to prolong the feud without Swagger pinning or making Rusev tap. Exactly. So if you just capture the flag. That's an easy way to give the baby face a win, but mm-hmm. if it was straight up, there's no way I would have not picked Rusev. Right. He's the guy getting pushed. Right. If they, were, I mean, if they would have specified as to what they were actually doing, right. I think all three of us would have picked yeah. Rusev to win that one. Uh, not, you know, not discrediting what we, what our picks were, uh, you know, because it's I like, mean, oh, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Match, I was still like, what, like Rusev? Yeah. Win? But I had to really think, like, hey, guess what? It's not. It's not a traditional flag on yes, a pole match, but like or the whole—that's how I felt the whole match. I'm like, right. even though I knew at the at the beginning of the match what it was, mm-hmm. it was very—it like, was just weird. Bastards tricked us. Yeah, they did. They threw off our game, but uh, but Rusev ends up getting the victory. Um, good work from from Rusev selling the ankle injury. Um, you know, Swagger did a great job selling the rib injury. Um, I, I I made this joke, and it's probably not that funny, but I'm like. Swagger's not over. USA is over. <laughs> yeah, the the whole we the people thing. I mean, fans are starting to get behind him a little bit, but they are more. What more are they gonna do to him after this whole thing? I don't know. Like we had talked about before. But. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see where they go. But uh, I mean, it looks like they're making him the the losers losing streak or something like that. He's trying to represent his country, and he's just letting everyone down. So, uh, but yeah, Rusev ends up getting victory. Uh, he attacks Zeb Coulter after the match, gives him giving him a kick, and uh, and then his flag is raised and the anthem is played, and it was just weird. But uh, next up, we got to see a lumberjack match. I don't really remember too much about this match for some reason. I don't know if I, like my focus was just taken away somewhere. I know that one things that one of the things we we're mentioning uh, was like lumberjacks weren't doing their job. Yeah. Or- were they? No, no, they got in the ring, and well, there was mass chaos. I mean, it started out like a traditional lumberjack match. The bad guy it goes actually out. had a lumberjack out there. There's a real lumberjack. Yes, there was. Thank you, Damian Sandow, for being the only actual lumberjack that was out there. Um, but like, you know, it it was your traditional lumberjack match. If a if a bad guy got thrown out near the bad guys, they tossed him back in. If he got thrown out near the good guys, they roughed what, him up. What a little cracked bit. me up was, and I was watching the guys on the side. Um, shoot, I can't remember some of the bad guys over there, but like Kofi, someone else was out there, and like the bad guys was beating up on uh, Ambrose, and like Kofi, and then would go up to him like, hey, hey, y'all stop, but they wouldn't do nothing or whatever. <laughs> so hey, you guys knock that off. They were saying something. They were getting those other guys' face, but they weren't like, you know, preventing forcing them. him to stop. Yeah. So um, you yeah, know, this match spilled out to the outside and. Up through the, you know, through the fans. What, um, what the heck was going to ha- happen? Like, what was it like? <laughs> he was going to try and powerbomb him off power the... Powerbomb off the... Uh, off the section, yeah. Yeah, like, what were you going to do? <laughs> well, I guess it was really supposed to be a tease, but there was no yeah. way in hell they were going to do that. Yeah, and then that prompted Kane to come out and say, you guys are lumberjacks, you're not getting him back into the ring, go get him. And so... Uh, what was it? One thing, also another thing I was going to point out uh, was like, Goldust got in Kane's face. He yeah. hit him, and his brother comes, but he doesn't attack Kane. He goes after someone else right next to Kane. I'm like, go after Kane. Yeah, he just punched your brother in the face, or yeah, hit. Your yeah, that was face. that was whenever they brought everybody back. Yeah, everyone had gotten back to the ring. Um, you know, he pulled the ref back after Ambrose went to make the make the pin, and uh, yeah, Goldust confronted him about it. Kane attacked Goldust. And I then, still won't. I feel like I don't want to say Stardust. So I want to say Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I mean that's fine. You can, um, and that you know prompted a brawl for everybody. And um, you know, as that was ending, that's um, the bad part. Like th- uh, that match. The only thing I remember is stuff with the lumberjacks and all the other stuff yeah. on the outside, uh, more than the match inside. I mean, it was that's... a lot of spots. Is basically what it was. Uh, it was a spot match. A lot of people were praising the lumberjack match. Uh, I thought it was all right. 
Um, you know, Rollins hit Ambrose with the briefcase when the ref wasn't looking and uh, ended up getting the pin to secure the victory. So, Doug, what do you think about this matchup? Oh, well, I have to disagree. I think it was anything but, like, traditional, like, um, lumberjack match. Uh, I don't know that we've ever seen a lumberjack match where it got this out of control where they were able to brawl around the arena. Yeah. I think it was fun, and they were able to go for some, like, cool spots that were exciting. And I thought the crowd ate that up. But as far as the stu- – I don't know that it works for me in the sense of, like, what the stipulation means. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, like, Ambrose called for the lumber – he picked the stip. So right. he got the lumberjack match. So he wants to keep Rollins in the ring. Right. So – but whenever he got tossed out, he just started immediately brawling with, like, the heel guys, which is sort of fine, but – It's because he's unstable. You never know what he's going to do. Well, like – there's a difference between being a crazy guy and being a stupid guy. And some, <laughs> sometimes they want to, they, they think that's the same thing. Being a lunatic doesn't necessarily mean he's stupid, right? Crazy it means, stupid love. Right, yeah. I mean, he, he sort of initiated the brawl around the arena, right? Right. So if you want a stipulation to keep him in the ring, why would you be the one who initiates leaving the ring? You would want him in a spot where he's controlled in the ring, right? So as I, I didn't think it was a great match. I don't even think it was a, um, a really good match. I think it was a fine match. It was it was easy. It went down easy with mm-hmm. some of the big spots, but I don't know. I have mixed feelings because I, I don't think they use the stipulation in the right way for the maximum effect. So I, I don't know. That might be a nitpick. Some people may say who who cares as long as it was fun, and I think that's fair enough. Yeah. But uh, I just think if I'm trying to think of it from like the perspective of Ambrose's character and like why he would want this match and then abandon the match type once he got it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I found it weird that they didn't go with like a cage match or something. Well, I think that's the 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 payoff. At the yeah. End. I think we're gonna end up there hell in a cell probably. Right? Yeah. And then he'll probably probably feud with Kane for a while or something. I don't know. Like. I mean, they can't step back. They've already started with the stip matches, so they've got to progress. And I think it ends at Hell in a Cell. And I mean, I th- clearly, I think they'll have a cell match. Hmm. That'd be interesting to see. So, uh, so we'll have to see how that plays out. But Seth Rollins doesn't end up getting the victory in the Lumberjack match, which takes us into the next matchup: Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho debuting a new jacket, very uh, light, bright esque. Um, it was enjoyable. The match itself. Why, what about Wyatt's uh, butcher smock apron thing? Oh, yeah. He's worn that before. Huh? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I'm pretty sure he has. All right, my bad. But, uh, but yeah, it was uh, pretty creepy to see. All those lights whenever uh, Wyatt does his entrance is so cool to see. Um, match itself. Well, uh, I would have liked for it to be a little bit better, but, you know, I didn't have any big problems with it. How about you guys? I don't remember too much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was it was solid enough, but Bray has clearly lost a lot of a ton of momentum, mm-hmm. and it felt like more uninspired in performances from Chris Jericho. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, I don't have any bitches, but uh, you know, it was uninspired. It was tired. I mean, I don't. You can't kill me, for I am already dead. I'm already dead. Code breaker. Nope. So, uh, the right guy went over for once. So. Yeah. So Bray Wyatt finally gets a win <laughs> on a pay-per-view. Um, defeats Chris Jericho. Um, I don't know. I, I felt like it was a little flat. Um, I mean, the crowd was kind of into it. Let's go Jericho. Let's go Wyatt. Or Y2J. Let's go Wyatt. Um, I don't know. But it was, a, I mean, it wasn't a bad match. It just could have been better. Uh, that's sort of like uh, I felt like as a whole the paper there weren't very many misses yeah but I mean <clears throat> even the things that didn't like knock your socks off and went down kind of easy mm-hmm. you know what I mean? it was just an easy watch right right okay yeah yeah so it was like okay cool you know so um so that takes us into the next matchup one of the most hyped up matches for the SummerSlam Stephanie McMahon going up against Brie Bella um Stephanie McMahon coming out wearing all black, looking mighty dominatrix like. China esque. China esque, yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, going up against Brie Bella, got his, 
her top saying Bree mode on it. Um, very little offense from Bree Bella, which is something that you wouldn't expect from I, a current yeah. roster as opposed to someone who hasn't been in the ring in 11 years. I think I like this match for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. I definitely, I had like, I had big time problems with this match. I <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I know. I, with the regular rules and stuff, I mean, I, you can like what you want, you know, mm-hmm. but like, one thing Doug said, like, when we first saw, uh, I was about to say Triple H, Stephanie dominating, was like, who who, who wrote this, who booked this, or yeah. whatever, Triple H, and all that stuff, and like, she's a big, she's a big, she's a tall girl. Yeah. Uh, well, but, she, she is tall, she, she, she is physically, like, more dominant than Brie. Yeah. So, but my problem with how, how they laid the match out was, she came out from jump street working like a bully like a like a <laughs> like a, lo, a prolonged heat segment on brie mm-hmm. which i have a lot i have a hard time uh buying into that someone who's not been an active competitor in over a decade who was never like a full-time wrestler in the first place mm-hmm. who is in the in the meantime been a mom and yeah. uh an office work and and someone who works this in a corporate funny. setting which um Ladies, moms, I'm not downplaying the difficulty of your job. I'm sure being a mother of two or three or however many kids you have is is hard as fuck. But what I'm saying is being a mom, I don't think necessarily equips you for combat right (laughs) right when you come back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There might be some moms who would disagree out there. I don't know. Triple H trained her, so. Yeah. (laughs) My problem with this is that she came in working like a bully monster heel style. Yeah. Showing like no like like she never left and she was the shit while she was here, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> I th- I would it would have went down a lot easier for me if Bree, who is been off for a few weeks but is technically an active competitor, mm-hmm. was fired up and pissed off because she paid someone off to be uh, to lie about her husband and spread all these rumors and to send her to jail. If Bree's mad when the bell rings, Bree is on her ass like giving it to her yeah and then stephanie cheats or or triple h causes a distraction and, and underhandedly somehow she gains the upper hand right then she goes into the beatdown segment right yeah don't they they portrayed her as if she is a more dominant competitor like right mm-hmm. which didn't set well with me right i mean from the get-go right like they yeah. did you know neck and co- or collar elbow tie up and then it was just dominance from, right. from Stephanie. And I don't, I think that's fine as long as Brie would have came out like a house of fire, give it, laying it to Stephanie. She cheats and then she can go into the heat. Zone, right? right. I'm fine with that. But the way, the reason I have such a problem with it, because Stephanie technically worked a fine match. Yeah. If you're only looking at mechanics, you're saying Stephanie did fine. There's yes. no problems with her. However, that's not the story to be told, in my opinion uh-huh. here. Like you spent so much time getting Stephanie over as like you're, I mean fuck, I don't know. Her and Brock may be one A and one B heels. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You get you spent so much time getting her over as a as a, the a huge heel, and then you put her in a position to where she's gonna get like, uh, like nostalgia pops and like get the crowd like behind her like you, which is a whole other thing. We've been over this a hundred times, mm-hmm. like the crowd reactions. But I feel like they should have been smart enough to know that would have happened. Maybe that's maybe that's unfair of me to say. Maybe they had no idea that would have happened. But I, I don't know. But you go back to Raw the previous week, and they were already sort of, like, getting behind Stephanie, too. So yeah. I felt like they sh- they had enough of a heads up that they had to be smart with how they booked the match, right? I think they might be getting behind her because she is doing so well at her at getting her messages across. And for me personally, I cannot stand when either of the Bellas tries to cut a promo. It just sounds so scriptedly fake. I can't stand it. Sure. Whereas, whereas Stephanie comes out and... Natural. It's so natural for her. Sure. Yeah. Like, for me, that would turn me off from supporting the Bellas. It'd be like, I'm giving it to the girl who's make who sounds convincing. Sure. I mean, <clears throat> I, my point is not that Stephanie's doing a bad job. My right. point that is, if you're a heel... If you're booked as a heel, 
if they've spent months and months and months and months getting you over as a huge heel, mm -hmm. then do the things to minimize you getting cheered. Yeah. Like, don't go out there and put yourself in a position to where it's people are going to want you to cheer don't, you. Don't That's give Triple the H. fans an opportunity to chant for you. Right. I, I feel like people may like Ste Stephanie. Is Stephanie a better talker than either Bella? Fuck yes. <laughs> Stephanie, a better wrestler than either Bella looks like it from the paper you match. <laughs> However, that's not the story they're telling. Right. So I feel like this if... This is supposed to be Bree's chance at, you know, revenge. Yeah. And all she's doing is, you know, covering for defense. So if your story is... If your story is not that you want the crowd to turn on Bree, then, like, you're... You actively try to make them cheer Bree. You don't actively... Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's probably unfair of me to say actively to try to get them to cheer Stephanie. That's, no, she was trying to do it because she, if she's doing well, the yes chant. That's sort of sarcastic. I yeah. Think. I mean, it's sarcastic, but it's getting people to oh, respond. Sure, well, sure people yeah. are stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I just feel like the match was laid out. Stephanie did a fine job, and she's been excellent this year as, as a top heel. Mm -hmm. She worked a fine match, but I just feel like the match was laid out wrong. Uh, they didn't do the right things to sell their story for me. And that's why I hated it so much. Yeah. And it's just, Steph I got, Stephanie has been shining. I got yeah. suckered in like, cause <laughs> you know, you want to see Brie get her revenge. And mm -hmm. I got suckered in by her, her like coming and being dominant. And like some of the things she did to Brie looked kind of vicious or I don't know if yeah. Brie took it the right way or wrong. It looked, some of the things looked like, whoa, mm -hmm. and we just did that. So I was like, Beat her ass. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of got sucked in like that. So. Well, it's, I mean, it's totally subjective. I'm not like telling you yeah. you're wrong. I'm just oh, saying, I'm just saying for me, that's like, if I said like, why the fuck did you like that? It's me. Like, I guess I'm sort of putting it in a way where I'm telling you you're wrong, but I, I, I just, I really just mean like, I, I got disagree and I don't, where are you? Well, coming? that's also where I'll tell you, you how I you felt. Like yeah, how yeah, yeah. I got sucked in. Too, so. Yeah. 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 And, and how, how do you feel about Nikki turning on Brie? It's, I don't know what it accomplishes. It no, really nothing. 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 I mean, so we're gonna get our Bella Bella feud. Uh, I think the much clamored for. Everyone's been wanting it. Who no. wants well, it? I was gonna say who wants it. Well, I think I think this is gonna play heavily into Total Divas. Holy shit! That's, that's something that we talked about. I, I like, think that's a story for the next season. The next season Divas. is gonna be very different. The Bellas are gonna be against each other. Uh, Cameron and Naomi. This is why I have a problem with. Not just Total Divas, but like a reality show. If it's portraying something that's already happened, okay? SummerSlam was this past Sunday. We're not going to see that, quote, episode until like October. So, but the thing about that is I didn't think that they didn't know if that show was going to get picked up going again further. Yeah. Like if you, their initial run was shortened and they actually had to kick out some extra episodes, right? Right. So they probably didn't know that they were gonna, there was going to be a need to eventually sync up what's happening live versus what's happening tape. Right. They they didn't they, I mean, they possibly could have, but who would? That was not a for sure three season so show from get from get go. They yeah. had to they had to like they probably didn't expect to be in three seasons until they got three seasons. Right. right. Yeah. So now maybe they adjust how they shoot. Right. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's just, you know, for a reasoning that's not going to happen until like two or three months from now is just kind of stupid. And I watched the, the backstage pass for SummerSlam on the network, and all that happened is that Brie was on the phone talking to Daniel Bryan. She's like, oh, I love you so much, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got to get ready for my match. And Nikki's standing next to her, mocks her because she's like, y'all spend all of y'all time together. And when you're not together, you're on the phone with each other. And she's like, yeah, I know, but, you know, I, lo I love him, and that's, you know, that's what we do. And then she's like, then Nikki was like, oh, I have something to tell you. Uh, but then she gets a text message, and so she looks out on her phone, completely avoiding her sister, uh, completely avoiding Bree. And then Bree gets a phone call, and she's like, oh, hi, doctor, yes, this is Bree. And then she walks off, and is like, oh, I'll, you know, I'm sorry, I'll be right back. And Nikki was like, oh, no, what I had to tell you was important. And then she just turns around. Knocks on a door and says, hey, it's Nikki. The door opens and then it closes to show the authority logo. So they're having a you know, serious discussion right outside her opponent's door. And it's just, oh, it was, oh, I fucking hate it. Um, it's just so poorly acted. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, so Nikki turns 
for whatever reason. She wants to be the star because apparently everything in the world is about Brie Bella. And she's mad about that. So. Brie mode. Brie mode. Yeah, no Nikki mode. So Stephanie ends up getting the win. I like the idea of Brie mode being like a curse for other people. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, uh, <sighs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. She's putting the hex on you. like. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this was this was the make or break match for us. For as far as our predictions go, this is the only one where we separated ourselves. Uh, I picked Stephanie McMahon. You guys unfortunately picked uh, Brie Bella to win. Um, I thought no, I thought there was a different match. No, nope. I thought uh, we were split or with uh, Roman Reigns, not Roman Reigns, uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. We originally were. Uh, I was originally gonna pick Ambrose. Um, and then I said, "Oh, screw it! I'll just i'll I'll pick." Uh, you in the Rollins. last match, you picked John Cena. No, I did not. Oh, okay, sorry. So, uh, so yeah, so this was the only one that separated us. Um, but yeah, so Stephanie ends up getting the victory. Um, next match up, we got to see Roman Reigns going up against Randy Orton. Um, yeah, this was a good filler match, cool down match from the shocking twist and turn of Nikki Bella. Um, Roman Reigns ended up getting the win. But I don't think he was the victor with the crowd. I, you know, it seemed to me like the the crowd was more behind Orton to me, uh, sort of outshining him. Uh, did did either of you guys get that feeling? No, I didn't pick up on that. I thought no. they were clearly behind Reigns. Really? I just I don't know. I I felt like uh, there were there were too many lulls for for Roman Reigns and uh, and the crowd was getting hyped up, um, like when when Orton was getting ready to to do the mm. punt. And he caught the he caught the uh, RKO. Um, well, I think they popped for his big spots, but I think that's yeah. different. I think that's yeah. different than like like cheering a guy on to victory. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like we've been talking about it for a while, but I feel like this this match went too long. He needs long matches to grow. Yeah. But he needs to. They need. It's almost like you have to incrementally step up. He's, they're like, okay, Roman. You were really good at working a seven-minute match now. <laughs> now we can give you a 10-minute match. Right. When you get really good at 10, then you can get 12. And when you get good at 12, we can give you 15. But it's like they were like, Roman's a guy who's really good at like working squash matches, and he's a really guy. He's really good at being a third man in a trio. <laughs> uh, and he's just now really learning how to, to, to work singles matches, or at least longer singles matches. And it felt like, I don't know, would they go 12 or 15 minutes or so? Yeah, probably, yeah. And, uh, I mean, he was really exposed as far as, like, um, where what he lacks as a singles competitor, uh, I thought it was a very mediocre match that had a very hot finishing sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a hot home stretch can make can save a shitty match, but I don't think it necessarily that a hot um, home stretch makes a mediocre match a good match. Right. I think there's a difference there. Like the whole time in this match, and at the end of the the next match, mm -hmm. and like what we talked about last week, and like. And we don't know if this is true, but like a prediction, like Roman Reigns, you know, take it. Did you read the report or anything like that? Uh, they're wanting him to be like a top guy. No, yeah. no, no, no. About or, facing Brock, if that's the yeah, yeah. It's been reported. Yeah, or it's been rumored. It's been rumored. Like yeah. I still can't see that. But I, it, it I would not. It would not be for a while. I was about to say if it's at WrestleMania, I still can't see it at WrestleMania. Yeah. I still cannot see it because, well, let's skip into the next match. But still, I still can't see it. Yeah. Well. When we when he was in the shield, when the shield was still together, we were all saying this is going to be the next breakout guy. This is this is going to be the guy, and I know why we were saying that is because he had Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins to pick up the slack for what he was lacking. Yeah. He's on his own now, so he has to pick up all of the slack. He's got to improve in the ring. He's got to definitely improve on the mic. Um, you know, he's got the charisma. He's got the look. He's got that it factor. But there are still th things that he needs to work on in time before he can achieve that pinnacle. It's going to be a while, I think, in my opinion, for him to be ready for Brock. That's yeah. Just me. I mean, you know, it's August now. We still have September, October, November, December, January. So we have five months before the Royal Rumble. And even after that, you've got three or, you know, say three months uh, to WrestleMania. So in the next eight months, give or take, do you think Roman Reigns could be ready? No. No? No. How about you, Doug? If you give <clears throat> Roman Reigns the next eight months to get him ready to 
be ho- hoisting that title over his head at WrestleMania. Part. Not if not unless I see like more improvements. Right. Like I don't know. I know that he wants to try and he's trying, but I just don't. I don't see it. Right. Do I think Roman can be ready to, to be the man in eight months? From the progress that he's made, say since the Shield split up to where we are now, um, which has been like what two months, maybe something like that between a month and two months, um, maybe three. I don't know. Yeah, um, based on the progress that he has made so far to where you think he could be in January at the Royal Rumble and or WrestleMania in late March, early April. I forget when it is for WrestleMania 31. I think <coughs> I don't think there's any real way of knowing. I think it all comes comes down to quality of opponent, uh, what those guys are going to be able to teach him, mm-hmm. how much time he's getting in on the house shows, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's absurd to think he could get good enough, like passable good in eight months if he's putting the work in. Right. But, uh, I mean, there's no way of, kn- of knowing. I think it dep- It comes down to who they pair him with, what those guys can do with him. What they can teach him. Right. Um, I mean, there's already debate, supposedly, if you believe the rumors, like Triple H is uh, saying he would like for, for Roman to face Brock at Mania, and yeah. Vince is saying The Rock should face uh, Lesnar at Mania. Yeah. So that's Triple right. Threat. Yeah, I know, right? That's if you believe those rumors, then you would say they're internally they're split over if this guy's going to be ready or not. Right? Cousins versus yeah. Brock. Yeah, and uh, you know who knows? I mean, what Tyler just said, Triple Threat. That might actually help Roman Reigns because you can have someone take some of the pressure off of him. Um, uh, but if this is if that would be his coming out party as like a main event, like a true like you're the man now, you're an ace for the company. I think he's got to be one-on-one singles match. He's got to be able to prove it in a singles match. Yeah. He's got to prove it in, a, like, a 25-minute. Ah, uh, shit, dude. It's like, I, I don't know. We, uh, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. We have the... to see, but, like, I hate, I'm not skip, I'm skipping just a little bit, but, like, the, to see the last match, what all happened there, and then you got to be prepared for that shit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that that's true. I don't know that I agree with you've got to – you have to be able to put it in 25 minutes. I think that there is a certain type of wrestler – that has to be able to put in 25 minutes. I think Roman's a different kind of wrestler. Um, so his style's different. Right. So he doesn't necessarily have to go 25, but if you can't go a hot 12 to 15, <clears throat> that's a fucking problem. Yeah, well, the reason why I say 25... Like a real solid 15 minutes. The reason why I say 25 is because, like we said, it's rumored that it's going to be Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Both play out a sort of slow, methodical style of, of you know, battling. There's going to be a lot of downtime, a lot of slow stalking, you know, boom, 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 you know, kind of, you know, I mean, like Clash of the Giants and oh, okay. you know, stuff like that, you know, the, the drums to symbolize, you know, the, how big they are, um, just kind of stuff, you know. So it's, it's not going to be, like, fast, swift. Like, there might be a couple – chains um that they do but it you know that kind of match i think would be a more slow you know collar elbow tie up into the ropes do this you know get knocked down we're both down you know fight back up and then do another spot but um that's why i say 25 minutes i mean that would that would be a long 25 minutes for the fans but um i don't know and if you're going to have him prove his prove his worth I think he would need to do it to put on, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes um, to prove it. I mean, I think 15 is completely reasonable. If you can't go 15, I don't know that you belong in the main event. Yeah. But I don't know that he has to ever go 25 yeah. ne- necessarily. Well, I don't know. We'll have to it, see. It depends on opponent. I mean, it depends on what they're what they're going for, what yeah. what they're trying to, what story they're trying to tell. That's true. So, uh, but Roman Reigns does end up defeating Randy Orton. Um, much to the delight of the crowd. And that takes us into the main event of SummerSlam. Brock Lesnar going up against John Cena for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Wasn't even close to being a match. This was destruction at its finest definition. Um, you know, Lesnar... I don't remember... I could be wrong. This stuff happening 
Okay, it's happened to John Cena twice, stuff like this. But was he like that? It refreshed my memory. Was he like that towards CM Punk, Undertaker? No. He was like that towards Big Show, right? Well, something happened. Yeah, that, that was, he hit him with a chair like a hundred times. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was it. But it wasn't like, like that. Yeah, towards like Undertaker, CM no. Punk, Triple H. In those matches, CM Punk had the upper hand at some points. He had a yeah. good offensive, you know, attacks. Same with the Undertaker. This was just a demolition of John, John Cena. Cena's like, hey man, just beat the shit out of me. Pretty much, like, look, I gotta go take a. That sounds go bad. It sounds bad, but I liked it. Yeah. And it's not like, oh yeah, Cena deserves it, but no, I'm not saying that. I just I just liked it. Yeah. And uh, you know, this was like I said, just a decimation of John Cena. Within the first minute, Brock Lesnar hits an F five, then, you know, John knees to the late. knees to the ribs, punches to the head. John Cena tries to get a little offense and just cannot do it. Suplex after suplex, suplex. ended up being sixteen in all. Who counted that? Who did that? It was WWE who put that out there. Huh? Yeah. yeah okay. uh, I think it was 15 Germans and one normal suplex. Um, just completely. Well, John Cena did do the F, uh, F5. Uh, attitude sorry, adjustment. attitude adjustment. Yeah, he did do an attitude adjustment. He did look, lock on the FTF. But those were his only bits of uh, offense that he was able to get. Um, you know, whenever he hit the attitude adjustment, covered uh, Brock Lesnar for the two count and you know, uh, and then Brock Lesnar did the sit up like like Undertaker, and he just stares at John Cena, and he just starts laughing at him. <laughs> so, um, I mean, my goodness, one like Paul Heyman said on Raw, you cannot take credit away from John Cena because a German suplex. I have personally have never taken one, but but the way he landed a few times, my God, was like. Dude, that could have hurt. Yeah, it could have just snapped his neck or something. Like, because sometimes he landed on his back, but there's other times he landed on his neck. Yeah, it looked like to me. Got very lucky that he wasn't, at least that we know of, seriously injured. Um, for him to be able to take that, and still, you know, be able to lift him, also Lesnar over to, to that. If you notice when that. he did the, the German suplexes, he went a far distance. Yeah. Uh, when he threw him over his head or whatever. Yeah. So um, on some of them. I mean, this was just this was a demonstration of power for Brock Lesnar. That's all it was. He didn't do um, the Kimura lock. Is that right? That yeah. Called? Yeah. He didn't do that. Right. Um, Doug, what did you think about this matchup? Uh, I don't think it was as good as the um, Extreme Rules 2012 matchup they had. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a different different set of rules. They had a, a little bit more to play with there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I thought this was absolutely perfect. Uh, I don't know that they're – it was perfect. Like It was exactly the match that they needed to have um, because all signs seem to be pointing to – and uh, I mean, I may be speaking for you, but I think we're all guessing that we're going into Brock's reign of terror. Right. And if you're yeah. going to kick off someone's reign of terror <clears> – <throat> You, you do it by decimating the absolute, like, top hero. Like, mm -hmm. that's how you kick off a reign of terror, by <laughs> taking down the top guy, unquestionably taking down the top guy. Um, as unique as their first match was, I think this may be the most unique match we've ever seen as far as a WWE-style main event. This was a prolonged squash match. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This was – we're not ready for this to end yet, so I'm going to just – drill you a few more times this was no uh suplex. this was not competitive in the least yeah i don't know that we've ever seen a least a less competitive main event to a pay-per-view ever um and that's sort of what makes it so unique and that's sort of i mean if you want to size up like championship matches that have had less offense than this the only one that i can think of is kevin nash hulk hogan finger poke of doom like there are not many other matches that had less one-sidedness. Look, I'm sure people are listening at home. They're going to be able to pull out, like, shenanigans like you just come out yeah. with or a quick roll-up or, like, Sheamus kicking Brian, surprising him. Right, the eight that seconds. Kind of stuff. This, was, this was, like, like a rape and pillage. Like, this was <laughs> an actual squash match that went on Burn for, like, your village like, to the like 12 minutes or whatever. 
And I don't know that we've ever seen that kind of match uh, as far as a WWE main event pay-per-view level style match. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought it was exactly the story that they needed to tell to to head into where we guess that they're heading into. Uh, I don't know that it could have been done any more perfectly. And I think uh, you guys sort of like said kudos to Cena, but I can't stress enough how much props to give Cena here. And I, yeah. and, and I don't just mean because he worked a grueling punishing match Ooh. where he took a lot of punishment. I mean, a lot of people say a lot of, uh, a lot of people have a lot of criticism of John Cena. Some of it's fair. Some of it isn't. But you can't question this guy is a company guy who, when the chips are on the table, does what's right for, for the company because there is not another ace of a company. There is not another top guy in the company in the history of the WWE who would have agreed to that match. <laughs> and I don't mean that in... I don't mean that in the, in the sense that no one would be willing to take that sort of punishment. I'm sure there are guys who would put up with the punishment to make a name for themselves. I mean, no one's ego would have not gotten in the way in, to work a, such a non-competitive match with someone. Mm-hmm. From Hulk Hogan in his prime when he was the ace, when he was the top guy of the company, Hogan would have never agreed to that match. Right. They would have never allowed something like that to happen. Shawn Michaels... Bret Hart, they would have never, they would have politicked their asses off. That Kevin match would have Nash. never happened in that way. Kevin Nash. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, that match would have never happened that way. All those guys, all those face aces, top guys of your company, all those guys have politic just between each other to not have to lose to each other. Yeah. And that's, that's just like, will he do the job or will he not? Not only did Cena said, yes, I'm doing the job, he, he, he he got his ass handed to him. He didn't get any. He got two flurries of offense in the whole match, and they were like Hail Marys. He's like, can yeah. I survive this? My back's against the wall. None of those other guys would have agreed to go out there and look that bad against someone. Right. I mean, that's fact. Like I said, You can't like argue the, with that. The other matches with Brock, Undertaker, CM Punk, those guys. They, they got it, offense in. Yeah. They got to hit their signature spots. Granted, Cena did, but like you said, that was the last ditch effort for him to do. Like whenever, uh, you know, when he normally does the shoulder tackles and it knocks him down, you know, he does the two of them and then it leads into the, you know, the you can't see me stuff. He threw the shoulder tackle, didn't knock Brock off his feet, hits the ropes again, does it again, still not down. And so, you know, then he goes for a third one, you know, goes into the the F5, which then encountered into the attitude adjustment. Um, Say what you want about Cena, but yeah. He he may have not had the uh, the the ultimate political stroke to say he wouldn't do the job to Brock, although he may have, or he may have never even cared about doing the job. That's not really my point. <coughs> but he absolutely has the stroke to say I'm going to be more fucking competitive. Than that right. If I'm doing. I'm going to get some kind of. Right. You You're know. not going to like. I need credibility from here. This was 98% Brock Lesnar offense, 2% John Right. Cena. So just for that, for that alone, I don't know that we've ever seen this type of match. And one as percent of that was, well, I'll give him, I'll give him three percent. I'll say one percent was that first flurry, one percent was the second flurry, and the third percent was the entire time that he held the STF. <laughs> so 97% of the offense was Brock. I mean, Brock looked like a killer. Cena. Did, did what he had to the victim. Yeah, I mean, he don't play the victim for too many people. No, 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 no. no. Only in person, been, only person. Yes, we Brock. have not seen a main event match that went went more than say five minutes. It was a prolonged squash. Match. Yeah, it was it was a twelve minute squash. Match. Yeah, you don't see that with Cena. however long it was. <laughs> this was not it just squash. This was squash, douse in gasoline, and set it ablaze. Like he destroyed John Cena. Again, I don't think it was better than their uh, Extreme Rules 2012 match. I think that was a better match. However, I thought it was absolutely perfect and absolutely the story they needed to tell. Yes. Or the match they needed to have to tell the story. Their commentators were on point for once. Uh, you know, he, you can listen to Paul Heyman in the background telling the referee, you better ask him because, you know, he's about to get his ass handed to him again. And every time uh, Brock Lesnar was setting up to do a German suplex, you can hear Paul Heyman, here comes the pain! And then... Lesnar would just launch him. And then for him to not only have already given him, you know, eight suplexes, then uh-huh. he grabs him and does four in rapid session, the fourth one being the release. Like, my God. Yeah, I mean, 
we, you and I sort of come at it from different angles, but that should hopefully together we got across the uh, the props that yeah. yes, Lesnar always looks like a beast, and yes, Lesnar looked like a beast in this match, but a lot of credit goes to Cena, a for taking the punishment and yeah. for B for being willing to take the punishment. Right. When he didn't have to. Yeah, they probably. I mean, they could have ended it at that after that first F five, and everyone would have been talking about it. Well, that's sort of what made made the match. Uh, sort of played into what because it was mm-hmm. so like uh he went for it so quick and you're like no way they would do it that fast but. yeah and i like the spot where jerry lawler uh was on commentary saying guys do not count john cena out he has been in these <laughs> situations before you can't count him out and then boom right after that lesnar's just attacking him some more you know then he then cena does get some offense and you know lawler's like hey what did i tell you guys you know i told you this and then boom gone just right. like that and then, you know, the the emotion that uh, uh, JBL was playing where he's just like, dude, just stop the match, you know? Like, it was like, we're, you know, we, you got to start thinking about health now, you know? Like, someone needs to stop this match. So everything played into it very well. Um, the match itself, while it was a squash, it was a great match. Um, it told a story, put fear in the locker room, and uh, Brock Lesnar is the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So, I mean, ma- major props to John Cena for being able to take that. I was about to say, like, <laughs> after this whole Cena thing, and like, I know people wouldn't see it, but if he's Reign of Terror, terror like, uh, destroy Randy Orton next. <laughs> I'm I just mean, saying. You destroy Randy Orton next. <clears throat> you never know who he's going to go after. Yeah, just one more time before we move on. Daniel said major props to Cena for, uh, for taking that. Uh, I say major props for not letting your ego tell you not to take it. Yeah. Because a lot of, uh, virtually everybody we know that who's been in his position wouldn't have taken it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that closes out SummerSlam, bringing us into Raw. Um, we kick things off with Stephanie McMahon wearing a Steph shirt, you know, mocking Daniel Bryan's yes, bringing out Nikki, Nikki Bella to discuss why she turned, why did you do it, and we got just the most uncomfortable scripted reading that. I've ever heard where she's like, it's always been about Brie, not me. And I'm mad at her now. Like that's to me, that's what it sounded like. It's just uh, poorly acting. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Good point about the Brie. So, um, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then the fact that Brie would come out looking insanely pissed off. Okay. She comes down to the ring just Oh, I'm I'm here to get my revenge. Steps in the as soon as she steps under the ropes, teary eyed. Nikki, why are you doing <laughs> this to me? I don't understand. We're sisters. We've always been sisters. We're always going to be sisters. I love you, and I forgive you for what you've done. And Nikki's like, "You forgive me? Slap! I'll never forgive you." Like I feel like I'm drunk telling. Telling I this like story. this. Like, I like I'm this. never going to forgive you for what you did to me because I don't like you anymore because it's always about you. <laughs> and then Bree is all like, I'm sad now, and I'm going to walk back to the r- backstage. Did that get the gist of it? Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to take away from it? <laughs> no, I mean, it was, ba- it was bad. You're not lying. <laughs> it was so bad. So, uh, so yeah, so let's go. Like all their promos and all their <laughs> stuff like that. Just, God, just stop it. Have oh. someone talk for them. But uh, next up, we got to see first matchup for Raw. Mark Henry teaming up with Big Show to go up against Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Um, good matchup. Good big man, big man versus big man, big man. Um, I like the note that, that they said on commentary where it's not every day you get to see Luke Harper as the smallest guy in the uh. ring. Um but I enjoyed this matchup. Uh, how about you, Doug? Yeah, this was fucking cool. Um, oh, um <laughs> it almost made me. Believe, I was like, but we got more Mark Henry later in the night, <clears throat> yeah. so I feel like this maybe uh, is going to be forgotten about. Yeah. But before that happened, and this was my focus, I was like, almost like, I wish they would have put the belts on the Wyatts, and this would have been our title oh, feud. I mean, yeah. That was neat. Because like, yeah, man, like I. Luke Harper and Mark Henry, that's that's some shit I want to see right there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, this was cool. Well, I know for, um, for what was it, main event this week, they had Big Show going up against Eric Rowan, so maybe on SmackDown 
get to see Mark Henry and Luke Harper. That's a fucking match I want to see. Yeah. Put the belts on the Wyatts instead of Goldust and Stardust. Yeah. That that kind of confused me a little bit. But um but I mean we'll dive into that a little bit later. Um next up we got to see a, a backstage segment with with Seth Rollins talking about what happened during his match. And then suddenly ice water gets poured on him. Uh, so he's unwillingly taking the uh, the ice bucket challenge thanks to Dean Ambrose. So since that happened, he has to donate money now. Yeah, to donate money and uh, and challenge three it's people. It's a good cause. Yeah. So uh, Seth well, Rollins Garrett's turns around. Is. Seth Rollins turns around to see Dean Ambrose giving him just a weird face, which I absolutely cracked up at, um, saying, what? It's for charity. And throwing the bucket in his face, attacking him. And uh, that led to a... a match up where the fans got to pick the stipulation. He almost was giving him like the Napoleon Dynamite, like the the <laughs> slack jawed like stare or whatever. Hey Lyle. So uh Yeah. Noah knows all about that. Yeah he does. <laughs> you been watching uh all his videos about the ALS challenge? I've been watching a few of them, yeah. I've saw uh Triple H, mm-hmm. uh Vince, Stephanie yeah. and Batista. Yeah but I liked Batista. Yeah. It was, did you, see, was good. did you see it Doug? Batista's? Yeah he just we were talking about the ones we had seen, and he told me the Batista one. I looked it up. I, saw, we I also saw the Chris Pratt one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the second Pr- Chris Pratt one. Oh, there's two of them? There's yeah. a one with uh, John's Bone, uh, John Bones Jones uh, from the UFC, a Big Show, and Mark Henry all together. They get, like, a cooler dumped over all three of them. Right? Yeah, I got to watch that one. Check that out. Really good cool stuff. The, the one I saw was when he uh, Chris Pratt was just drinking the drinks, yeah, the and they got one. him. That's Okay. He was like, I'm going to drink this ice vodka and yeah. smearing off ice. Batista's w- one was one of the best, though. <laughs> yeah. You could tell he had a ton of ice in that shit, too. Yeah. yeah. Some people are getting kind of lazy with it. Where they're like, here, just dump this I'm gonna, water. <laughs> I'm going to pour a bag of ice and then hot water into the ice. Well, Charlie, oh, have you seen Charlie Sheen's? Yeah. Money. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so, yeah. So, that set up a match between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose where people... Where the fans got to pick the stipulation, even though all three stipulations were basically the same in the WWE world. Uh, next up, we got to see Natalia going up against Paige. Very short matchup, thanks to uh, the distraction because of music playing that leads into a roll-up. Uh, thanks to AJ, who came out. Uh, Natalia ends up defeating Paige, the new Divas champion. Um, and then AJ gets on the mic and says, Hey... I love you too. In fact, I want to be with you right now. And I want to come in the ring and shake your hand. So she crawls in the ring and Paige bolts because she's not all about that. Even though she dedicated the match to pay, uh, to AJ and claimed that she loved her as well. Anything to take away from the matchup? No? Okay. So uh, next up, we got to see the authority come out and present Brock Lesnar with the new WWE World Heavyweight title. I think the new, new logo new. works better with the new belt. It does. All those, new, new. I don't know. I don't know if they, I'm pretty sure they use cubic zirconium because that would be expensive. I agree. I saw a picture of it. I agree because I still not my favorite belt. <laughs> yeah, but not I neither. It works, but it, it, I works it works. Yes, better together. Yeah, and it looks good though. Uh, so yeah, Brock Lesnar is presented with a new title. They even put they changed the uh, logos on the other ones because I saw something with Dolph Ziggler like. Yeah, showing off. I wonder what whatever. Brock's plates are going to be. Does it show the plates on? Yeah, it? it's the it's little, little horned, horned, horned thing, horned beast. They did a horned beast, and like, I wonder if they did like the. Uh, no, it's the just gr- uh, on both. It's the same thing on both uh, sides. Okay, yeah. not the uh, brass knuckle sword. No, <laughs> it's like the beast on one end and the Jimmy John's logo on the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was major props. Uh, now accepting sponsorships. Yeah. Oh, I want Jimmy John's. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, then, uh, so the, uh, the big gold belt, the world heavyweight. He's got like TV stickers belt. on the, uh, <laughs> the Mount strap Dew of the belt. Totino's bold. <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm now thinking about Jimmy John's. Uh, well, actually during a pay-per-view, I was thinking about Tortino's bold cause they kept on playing. I was yeah. like, I can go for that. Like, man, man, I want some pizza pockets. Damn it. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so it's official. The big gold belt is officially retired. Um, can I have it? Bro- I know, right? Uh, Brock Lesnar even said in an interview with TMZ, he was like, I don't want to carry around two belts. Like. I just want to carry around one. Suck it up. <laughs> no, sure. right? Be a man. No, I'm not telling him that. Uh, so <laughs> You're going to be on the ground German suplex 16 times. I, dude, it would just take one. And I'd be like, I'm done. Uh, I'm done. So I didn't tuck my chin. I don't know that I'd even approach Brock in public because <laughs> I would just be afraid that it, it wouldn't go well, you know? Yeah. You're like way far Mr. from Les- him, like, m- m- Mr. Lesnar. Mr. Lesnar. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> so uh, next up we got... From that, we got a Paul Heyman promo 
where he, I mean, absolutely killed it. Just his delivery is so convincing. And I mean, it doesn't really matter what he says. For me, like, whatever he's got to say, I'm bought in. Well, and you got his DVD. I did. I purchased his. <laughs> I bought the Paul Heyman Blu-ray. Uh, Which very I want to get. It's very enjoyable. If you ever want to come over and just check it out, you're more than welcome to. Um, good stuff. It was very good, and I appreciate the fact that they went out of their way to put Cena over in the front. Yes. And, uh, you know, you know, Paul Heyman saying, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, top guy for maybe four and a half years. The Rock, top guy for maybe three and a half years. You know, Hulk Hogan, top guy for, you know, six years maybe. It was like John Cena has been the guy for at least the past decade. And, uh, you know, you can't take that away from him. So I'm glad that he at least put him over as well. He was like, but, you know, when it comes to my client, there is nothing. He was on Raw, huh? Cena? No. And... They announced that I he's going to... I think they said he'll be there next week. He's That's go- good, though, for not from... See, I think he should take more time off. I think they should at least have two weeks away just to sell the devastation. Because, I mean, you know, what he did to The Undertaker, haven't heard from him. I, I know he's the part-timer. He'll pop up, up around, around next WrestleMania. Well, no, they, he, even, he, he cited in his promo in The Taker's career. Yeah. He, he said... Into the streak, and, and we haven't seen him, or we're not going to see him again, or whatever. Yeah. It was like the night that my client, Brock Lesnar, defeated The Undertaker's uh, undefeated streak. It died. The Undertaker's career died. The C Nation died. John Cena's career died. So, like, just the passion, the, what he says is just. I'm ready for, like. So. I'm good. Uh, I'm ready for like you know people to step up to Brock like (laughs) like okay he's gonna have feud with certain guys but like I'm also ready for the meantime like hey guess what we're gonna throw this mid card or anyone hey we're gonna throw you at Brock you know match and let them get their ass whooped no you're not gonna see that at all Uh, I wish because he's his schedule is not changing he's just champ you're gonna see him every maybe two months on pay per view yeah so see this is the thing is this gonna bump. Is this going to bump uh, network sales? Because Brock's only going to wrestle on the network. And that right. is a key thing. So this is definitely by design. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just because they were ready to freshen up the main event scene. Not just because, I mean, but also because of the network. Yeah. Or is Brock going to drive people to the network to see him wrestle? He's right. all, Because he's not going to be there every month. He's no. going to be there every two months at best. You we're don't gonna, think he's going to wrestle on Raw? Once, no, no once not at all. all. Not at all. Not once. That's that's probably a good thing. They're with how they're the network is struggling. They need to make the network the pay per view system. Like yeah. TV builds to the network. You want to see Brock Lesnar wrestle? You better have the fucking network. He might get into a brawl with someone, but he's not having a one. He's not having one a match. match. Period. Period. He will not wrestle in Raw one time because they've even stated like Paul Heyman a couple times has been like, you know, my client doesn't wrestle for free. Like you want to see him, pay your money. He said, "If you're too stupid to pay nine ninety nine to that's, get the network yeah. to see Brock Lesnar, <laughs> yeah. then that's on you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but with his limited schedule, is that enough to get people to to? to he's get. We know he's going to be at Night of Champions. Yeah. They're going to do the Cena rematch. Right. Uh, we know he'll be at Survivor Series. We know he'll be at Royal Rumble. Uh, and then we know he'll. He may have to if they don't change elimination chamber, he would probably have to be there because there's only one belt now. Right. So that's four matches between now and Mania. Plus TLC. Oh, that's right, TLC. But he yeah. may not do TLC. I mean right. he's got the every other Hell we, in a Cell, Survivor Series, TLC. He won't do Royal Hell Rumble, in a Cell, he won't do TLC. Elimination Chamber. He'll he'll for sure we know he's doing Night of Champions. He will most likely do Survivor Series. Yeah. He will most likely do I mean, he will most likely do Royal Rumble. He may have to do uh, Elimination Chamber and then he'll do Mania. So four, maybe five mm-hmm. uh, matches in between now and Mania. Is that enough to people drive people to the network just to see Brock? See, for me, I don't like I don't like the Elimination Chamber stipulation. Well, they made but ch- they only have one belt this year, so they definitely don't need two. Maybe, I'd like to see that. To maybe see they'll get rid of it this year. That'd be nice. So four. Okay, so Brock Lesnar may have four title uh, defenses all on pay per view. Is that Enough between now and Mania is that enough to draw people to. He's only had three matches this year so far. Yeah, but the problem with that, which would have been totally fine if he hadn't lost to some people. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, he hasn't lost this year. That's right. Yeah. 
He, but still, like faced, people. Well, Big Show wasn't even a match. Right. Undertaker, he won. Right. Cena, he won. Right. Yeah, people still remember that Triple H shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't know if it'll be enough to drive people because you also have the people who already have the network and yeah. may not everyone. Everyone may not buy it. It may be like a group of people that go in on it, like and us. It, like us. But you don't know how. I mean, is this some people? Do you think this is a good attempt, though? Is this a is this their yeah, best shot? Yeah. Yes. Brock's yeah. only wrestling on the network. If you want the fucking network, yeah. go pay your money. Yeah. I mean, I would think so. That's the only way. Sort of, sort of going back to yesteryear. Um, you know, they said that you know Bruno San Martino held the title for so long because he only wrestled like what once a month. No, fuck or, no. They wrestled. He didn't wrestle. In, he, they, oh, no, that was like Madison Square Garden. Right, right, right. Yeah, Sorry. he wrestled at the Garden once a month. Yeah. The they didn't wrestle those guys didn't wrestle on free tv they wrestled at the house show which is the same model it's like you don't get to see us for free on tv you, you have to go to the house show to pay money to see us right. this is the same thing in effect is like you're not gonna see brock on raw you have to buy the network to see yeah brock on there. it's the same thing it's just like so don't technology expect to see it at your local right. house show don't right. expect him to see it see him at raw like i said he'll he'll, he'll show up he might get in a brawl sure sure uh, but paul Heyman's gonna be doing the selling he's not gonna that. wrestle right so Paul Heyman will be doing the most selling of of that, which, I mean, if you just listen to him, my God, he'll sell you anything. But is this oh, the, is this the is this the smartest uh, chance they're taking with the network? I would yes. think so. Is this the, this is their best bet to get people to tune in? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So I think um, that's fair. I mean, I don't know what your alternative is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you have an alternative. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Might as well take the shot you got, right? Mm-hmm. All right, that's what fair. You got to lose, right? I mean, I'm not shit talking Brock. I'm just like, is it a foolproof? I don't know that it's foolproof. I don't know if it'll work or not. We'll, I just don't we'll know see. What, what, yeah, we'll find out come WrestleMania. I just don't know what the other option is. And I find it very interesting of their choice of wording as far as when you get the WWE Network. It's like, oh, you get all the pay-per-views this year and you get the Royal Rumble next year. Like They're well, going to pull them out. If if the yeah. sales don't go up, they're going to pull the pay-per-views out next year. Yeah. Although, will they be allowed to do that or like aren't the pay-per-view well like companies are pulling out from them well it's definitely i mean it's it's definitely changing we already know it's gonna go up to 12 99 or, or whatever it is 11 99 12 99 13 99 something like that that sucks next year i mean <laughs> basically what they're saying if the sale you'd actually start paying me <laughs> if the if the sales don't come up they have to raise the price to meet to meet the, the right. number right so i mean i don't mean that pay-per-views are coming out i mean that they may, they may pull out the big four. I right. could see them doing that. They're going to raise the price a couple of dollars, and they may pull out the big four if mm. they don't meet where, which looks like they probably won't. <sighs> I don't know. Keep it all on the network. I'm enjoying it so, mm. and uh, I'm I'm glad we didn't have too many issues this this time around. I mean, it froze for a little bit, then like a two seconds later, two or three seconds yeah. later, it just went back to. But normal. it's been a lot worse before. Where we had, oh, to like, yeah, yeah. I had to completely shut off what I was doing and move everything around and get it back going. But yeah, so I mean, if you have if you have the network, I hope you're enjoying it. If you don't, because it's not in your country, please get it whenever it becomes available. But uh, if you if it's available in your country and you do not have it and you're a big wrestling fan. Check it out because it's just ten ten dollars a month. You're saving money um, by not ordering the pay per view and just getting the network. So I mean, it's just foolish if you're, if you're doing that. But anyways, uh, I mean, unless you have just a bad internet connection, which I can understand that. But back to Raw. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been fighting sinuses all week. Um, next up, we got to see Miz going up against Ziggler in a rematch for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, this match was okay. Uh, Ziggler was selling his knee injury from the night before. The finish was so weird. It came out of nowhere. It, from out of nowhere. Well, it felt, I mean, I'm, I'm s sure he was counting the whole time he would have to be, but it, it's almost like that, that count snuck up out of nowhere. It's yeah. like, uh, I don't know if he sped it up to, to be the finish or whatever. Two, it was weird. Three, four, five, six. What I will say about the Miz though is Seven, eight, nine. I don't know what in the fuck the Miz was wearing, <laughs> but it is fucking awesome. He should wear really. I thought for for him it's awesome. God, right? whatever that looks like some like uh, fashion week like asymmetrical bullshit like nah. you you see on some runway model that you no no 
actual practical person would ever wear that. Yeah. That's the point, right? <clears throat> That's the point. That's why it, it's... Because ab- he's the A-lister. He gets all the designer clothes. Yeah, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous looking, and that's why it's so money for him, right? I Heck loved yeah. it. I thought I was like, I hope he wears. I hope that's his ring jacket. That looked that fucking looks awesome. So stupid. I, that's what it was. That's why it's so awesome, though. It, can you not picture that, like some like? No, I can picture some it. Some waifish model like on the runway wearing some bullshit like that. Yes, that's why he has it. That's why I can't stand runway models, <laughs> and they have to be serious all the time. Like, go out and at least. That's the point. It looks fun. so stupid. That's why it's cool. It does okay, look I just got back from you know, drink. Uh, let me guess, Miz. Yes. So, Did you it, see it was a that different, thing he was wearing? Was it different from the uh, pay-per-view? No. Uh, he was, Same thing? Yeah. That, that weird... big white thing that it looked like a hoodie that was he was wearing backwards. I mean, it something. looked a little different, but I mean, it wasn't like, hey, no. that's horrible or anything. I so thought it was stupid. awesome. I loved it. So stupid. I mean, I've never, seen, I've never seen a jacket like that before. I don't want to see a jacket right? like that. Mm-hmm. that what, we're, what I was trying to convey to Dean, I was like, does can you picture in like a... Some like runway model wearing, you know, how they wear those like ridiculous things that no real person would ever wear. They walk in through the blue still. I can't do the blue still. Do the, there he is. The point is that they dress like jackasses on a lot of that stuff, right? And that's the point, right? That's why he has it. Merman. <laughs> so, anyways, next up, we get a backstage segment featuring uh, Jack Swagger talking about what we the people really means about when the chips are down, you're backed into a corner. You don't What's cower, you come out swinging. Nothing about Rusev, huh? Well, he felt that he let his country down, and apparently well, someone did. pissed in JBL's coffee, because for the rest of the night, he was just pissed off. JBL? Yeah, he was just... A- after he was, Swagger? He was pissed off at Swagger and everything that happened really? after that. Why? Yeah. Why? He was like, yeah, he let him down. I'm a real American, and he let this whole country down. And well, I don't want to hear the Russian... National anthem. I want to hear the American national anthem. I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I watched the JBL and Cole show a few times, and God. like JBL and Zeb Colts are always together. Yeah, I don't know if they're like good friends. They BFFs. Life. Anyway, so Swagger was hoping to redeem himself and fight for America against Cesaro. We uh, we've moved on. Okay, so yeah. okay, the Bo comes out to call out Swagger, right? Well, this was after the match, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, Cesaro ended up getting the victory over over Swagger. And, uh, yeah, finally the losing streak of, of Cesaro is over. Um, Should have beat Rob Van Dam. But what was with the change of Cesaro's opening? Like, it went from the air raid siren to an ambulance. I don't eh, like that. I'm like, I'm that was the like, one thing that I liked about his theme song, and they go and change it, and I I'm like, I still don't Ugh. like it. The, the, any, yeah. of, any of it. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. It doesn't fit with him, though. No, Maybe doesn't. he likes it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, so Cesaro ends up getting the victory, and like Doug was saying. Oh, but so Bo comes out. Does Bo know something with that we don't know? Bo knows. God damn it. <laughs> but, uh,. He was calling him out like Zeb had left him. Commentary put it over like Zeb wasn't there because of he got kicked in the face. He was selling the injury from Rusev, right? Bo put it over like uh, like Zeb left. Like he bounced on Swagger. Like he's not going to be managing him anymore. So what I was saying is, <laughs> do you think it was Bo just adding that to his promo or... What did do you he think, say precisely? Do you happen to remember? He said you lost your match, you lost Zeb or something like that. Because Zeb wasn't oh, yeah. there, but Zeb got kicked in the face by yeah, Rusev, yeah. so he may have been selling the injury. That's, but Bo yeah. presented it like he's not going to be managing him anymore. Um, I think it was just you lost the match and Zeb got taken out. Do you think sw- this gimmick works without Zeb? No. I don't think you so. You kind of need Zeb. You kind of have to have We the people him. follow Zeb. He kind of needs Zeb's. the mouthpiece. Yeah, he can't, he can't talk. Yeah, I mean, he tried with the backstage. Promo. He, it was for him. It was decent. Yeah, so I don't know, but I felt inspired by Bo Dallas. Did you really? All you have to do is Bo leave. So, uh, yeah. Say Vince was already over him. Yeah, oh, that's, that's sad. sad. That is big time. But what can you do? Oh, he should never have lost the streak. Once he lost the streak, it was like boop. Gone. He's gonna be in the back with Adam Rose. Yep, he will be. I believe that this is a bad idea. So, uh, next up, we got to see six man tag match. Hold up a minute, playa. Uh, RVD, Sheamus, and Roman Reigns going up against Ryback and Randy Orton. 
Huge pop for uh, for Ryback. Not just a pop. It was like sustained heat for the kid. He would, I mean, I guess it was his hometown, but yeah, they were like. they were in Las Vegas. I at one, at one time, he was like shushing them and saying, all right, like, yeah. come on, guys. <laughs> like, you're going to get me in trouble. I'm not supposed to be this over right now. There were, I mean, there were chants for we want Ryback to uh, Ryback rules, Ryback rules. Feed I'm a more, bad feed me guy. More, feed me more. And then uh, I liked you could tell that the guys were at least having fun. In, I like when their Orton, match. Like, as much as, as monotonous as as stale as Orton can be, when they were like at a certain point, he just like pointed at Ryback, like you want him, and they're like yes. And he was like fine. Yeah. <laughs> and they tagged him in, and then Ryback looked hot for a few minutes, and he tagged out. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they're like, get back in there. That's how to get him. Well, yeah. it was yeah. totally. You could tell it was ad lib. That was not. Yeah. You could tell that wasn't what they were. What the plan was. <laughs> It was, but it was, uh, you can tell it was just like, all right, fine, <laughs> we'll let you have him for a few minutes. Gone, get in there and get it out of your system. But no, they were hot for Ryback, man, which is good. I mean, I mean, I guess. But, well, it's wherever you know, you're, guy, but, your boy, like, hey, man, everyone over here is hot yeah. for Mark Henry. Yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. So, uh, but RVD ends up getting the pin, getting the victory for, uh, for his team. Um, it was, a, it was a fun match. I think it's pretty solid. Yeah. So uh, next up, we got to see the Usos going up against Gold Dust and Stardust. Um, I don't know what's up with this. Yeah. Um. I mean, didn't 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 they get the victory like last week or something? Or they had? I forget what it was. It was like main event, main event. Oh, well, I don't remember. I don't remember what caused this, but I remember them shaking hands sometime last week or the week before. They beat Ryback, so then I don't remember, but I feel like it happened. Where they shook the hand, like maybe Stardust and Col- uh, Goldust yeah, yeah. got the win over the Usos, and they shook the hands of the Usos, saying, "Hey, you know, we tried." I know what you're talking about, but I don't know if they beat them. I I, I know you're speaking over the shaking the hands. Thing. Yeah, I'm trying to place it in my mind. Mm. I don't know what the fuck it was. I can't remember. But anyway, so for some reason, it prompted a match between these two teams. Um, this is weird. Yeah. It it was really weird. Um, I'm kind of bummed that uh, the Usos didn't get a match during SummerSlam, at least. Um, but, you know, what can you do about that? But It just felt weird. And, like, of course, the only way you can build a contender or the only way they think you can build a contender is to beat the champs in a yep. non-title, which is fucked to begin with. Mm-hmm. But the dynamics off because at least as of right now they're both baby faces. Yeah. They may turn the. Uh, Gotta look for that cosmic key. Yeah, I'm, it's just weird. <laughs> do you I think know they? Where it is. Do you Something think they called an audible? Do you think they called an audible within the course of the show? Because why else would they double double not double book but double use Mark Henry? They saw him early. Yeah. They got the win, and it seemed like they may be building uh, Show and Henry as competitors, yeah. uh, or as co- uh, contenders for their Usos, which is also babyface, babyface. But yeah, I think their styles would mesh better. At least the matches would be better, I think. Mm-hmm. But uh, then they called Henry out, and it's like, or it seemed like halfway through the show they realized they're going to use Henry somewhere else, and they're like, okay, now we got to call an audible in the tag team stuff. Yeah. Maybe. That just came off weird. I don't know. Very don't, weird. I'm not sure. So, I don't know, but uh, it was weird. Goldust and Stardust ended up getting the victory. I don't have a lot of interest in that. Yeah. I'd much rather would have seen the... Uh, Harper and... Well, I'd much Goldust. rather have seen, like, Show and uh, Henry. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, but I'd even much rather, even more rather see Henry in the singles, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, next up, we got to see Rusev and Lana come out, cut a promo on how they were victorious, and Vladimir Putin, and Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, and then they're interrupted by Mark Henry, who comes out. Double duty for him tonight. Um, coming out saying, hey, man, I represented this country in the Olympic Games, and it was one of the proudest moments of my life, and you're just... Swagger didn't he, get the job done. He so. was like, well, he was like, you know, I don't have a problem with people who are from a different country who who have pride in of their country um but i've got a problem with you two and um you know basically uh bowing up to rusev um taking him out giving him the world's strongest slam there was more to it but uh my memory is a little hazy i know at the this moment. is random 
I have a song stuck in my head. Yeah. I was going to make a joke of like, didn't Mark Henry sing that song uh, where he was talking to Rusev? Like, I got that, this stupid song, These Hoes Ain't Loyal, stuck in my head right now. <laughs> so that's just plain. Like, yeah. he should like say that in front of Rusev. Like, Lana's not loyal. These hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> I'm sorry. That song oh, stuck in my head. So you, uh, so you think Lana's a hoe? <laughs> Is that what you're implying? Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Yeah? God, I can't get that song stuck in my head. <laughs> Plus, they're on a lot of vines. That song. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Doug, what are your thoughts about uh, a Rusev Mark Henry feud? Ah, uh, well, I love Mark Henry. Yeah. Uh, there aren't too many dudes that I love more than Mark Henry. But, uh, but you think that would help Rusev? Mark Henry. Like, I don't know. Like, I know Mark Henry would help anyone. But, like, I'm just saying I don't know with Rusev. I'm not re- still really not into him. He's going to he's gonna give him credibility that Swagger yeah. can give. I mean, don't get me. Rusev's the guy getting pushed here. Mark Henry's getting fed to Rusev. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just like I just like Henry's work a lot, you know. Like yeah. he's a dude. Mark Henry is the most underrated promo in this fucking company. He is a awesome talker. He's just the fucking best. He's so believable when he's when he talks. Uh, you know firsthand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I I I sort of hate this like uh, like phony. This whole like patriot patriotism angle does not play well for me. Yeah, I their only shot of of getting me to like this angle is sort of like they created the perfect storm for me to buy into this feud because a they gave me Mark Henry who is <laughs> a guy I love and b Mark Henry didn't play it in the the, the stereotypical way I like that I can buy into Mark America. Henry as a babyface because he said look man. I don't have a problem with people. I don't have a problem with people. I don't have a problem with anybody. I don't have a problem with anybody's flag. I don't have a problem of anybody uh, being proud of their culture. But I got a problem with the way you two jackasses do it. <laughs> and uh, like, I can get, I can, I can, I can be fine with that, right? Like, uh, he's not like fuck Russia. It's dumb. He's just like, hey, man, you guys can be proud of Russia, but like the way you go about it is lame or whatever. And and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And. Uh, so I can buy into him as a baby face and I already like his work. So that's, and he's such a good fucking promo. So that's, mm-hmm. so he roughed him up, huh? Oh yeah. Gave him the WSM. I don't know. W S S S. All right. Good try. Yeah. Gave the world's str- strongest were, man. Yeah. The world's strongest man. The world's, world's strongest strong man. Yeah. In the pants. <laughs> <laughs> there, he, had, he had another killer line in the promo. I can't remember what it was though. Mm, I don't remember. So, but good stuff. So looking for more of that feud to be in the near future. Someone's going to get their wig split. Um, final matchup, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose in a Falls Count Anywhere match, which means Falls Count Anywhere, not chairs and tables and everything is legal. Cinder blocks. Cinder blocks, for sure. Uh, it means that a fall can happen anywhere that the match takes itself. Maybe the, the cement blocks count as part of the floor because they were sitting on the floor. It's not a reoccurring thing, though. If the cinder blocks are there every single week, sure. If it's part of the structure of the building, sure. But this was not. I don't know. They got a case. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not allowing that. <laughs> Tell us what you think. <laughs> no, you can't allow that. So... Um, so apparently, I mean, I don't know why they'd be out there. Apparently, <laughs> cinder blocks are just sitting next to ringside for three hours, and no one. Yeah, no it's one, just there. It's none the wiser. It, it, it's hey, it's just like out. that little tub of like Gatorade and Red Bull. They have up. Just in case. Just in case. Oh, yeah. Just some... in case they need to prop up a table. Or you something. got the cinder blocks on standby. Yes. So, <clears throat> Seth Rollins, Dean Am- Ambrose get to close out the show. That's on... fun. That's fun, man. Yeah, that was a fun and, and entertaining matchup. Nothing to take away from these guys. They put on a heck of a show. Um, curb stomp into some cinder blocks or bricks or something. <laughs> yeah, that they was, broke the bricks or yeah, cinder blocks, whatever. Yeah, they were. I think they might have been tampered with beforehand. So, yeah, well, the thing about it is this. The, the, the thing about it is whenever he threw him on top of it, I wonder how they made him break. But we're sturdy enough for him to lay on top of him. Right? right. I don't know. What do you think they were really made out of? Chalk. Probably. Chalk. Yeah, about that. 
something like that. It's kind of dusty, like, yeah. Yeah. So, but, I mean, it was an entertaining matchup. Uh, Seth Rollins ended up getting the victory after some help from Kane. Maybe um, they were concrete and they just had some broken up already or something. <clears throat> possibly, and they just had something, like, on the insides that Dean Ambrose could have grabbed and pulled out and were like, okay, now it's going to collapse. Yeah. So, uh, who knows? But he did have his hand down on the concrete as uh, Rollins getting ready to do the curb stomp. It's... It was a little weird. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you take a swing and you miss. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, at least they tried to do something. Like, yeah. Uh, it's better than, before. like, breaking through the barrier for the hundredth time, yeah. like, right there. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's so extreme. I love Mark Henry, but God damn it. If Mark Henry <laughs> throws someone through that fucking barrier another time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, match ends up being called off. The ref stops it and says, You've gone too far this time, Rollins. You've gone too far. You're the winner of this match. <laughs> so, logic. But, uh, you know, what can you do? Um, but all in all, Raw was okay. Uh, it wasn't the best Raw after pay-per-view, but it was still enjoyable. That was pretty good. Yeah, it was still enjoyable. Uh, it wasn't the best, is what I'm trying to say, though. It's um, the best, goddammit. No, it wasn't. The one that was the best was the one that we were the best at. around. No, no, Steve, no. So, yeah, so there you go. That pretty much closes out Raw. Uh, only one bit of hot topic for you guys, because the other thing we kind of discussed earlier. Uh, no Q&A this week, so the hot topic is that uh, Triple H has announced John Cena will get his rematch at Night of Champions against Brock Lesnar. So who's the next baby face you throw at Cena? At? I mean, throw at him after Cena. Throw at Lesnar after Dude, Cena. I could not tell you. I mean, if you want to throw Sheamus out there, sure. That's a step down, like, clearly. Uh, if you want to throw Big Show out there, sure. If you want to That's throw step- Mark Henry out there, sure. He already beat, he already, he already beat uh, <laughs> Big Show this year. If you want to go ahead and turn Cesaro face and throw him out there, I mean, what can you really do? I don't know. I guess they got a few months to, they probably got, like, uh, two or three months to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Time is running out quickly. This month, the pay-per-view, and then you got like another month before he has to wrestle again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can figure it out. This past Saturday was WWE uh, 2K15 roster reveal, Woo! which I missed the roster reveal oh. part. I got to the uh, answer and questions, you know, all that stuff, <laughs> which was pretty yeah. funny. On They had uh, this Sting. This was to you, Cesaro, during your time as Claudio. Who called Claudio? I don't know who that is. They had uh, Sting, Hogan, Cena, Sheamus, Cesaro, and Roman Reigns. Which some of the questions, like, oh, fans don't have, like, a filter. No. Nope. They don't. And certain things you ask WWE superstars, they're not going to really talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, their time. Well, what someone Cena did talk about when he was prototype, that was the start. But, like, Claudia's not going to talk about. Uh, Claudia, sorry. Cesaro's not going to talk about himself <laughs> as Claudia. Who's that? <laughs> um,. And then also, you know, Sting, you know, when people keep on talking about Undertaker, I mean, if he talks about the first time there, that's fine. But if you ask him again in another question, he he looked like he was agitated. He really mm-hmm. did. But he put it politely. If he had his way, it will happen. Yeah. And that was it. You like know? How many times do I have to keep telling you people? And I don't know what, I don't know how this question popped up, but they asked Pretty much was it like do fans get on your nerves? Do you have like Yeah, do you ever like let the fans get to you and And they were all politely like, you know, it's pretty much saying no. You guys get to do whatever you want and we love that. I think Cesaro had the uh, it was either Cesaro or Sheamus who had the best answer to that. They were like, As long as we're not hearing crickets, then we don't care what you are doing. Well Hogan's like, When you get to my age, you're you're just glad you have video fans and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh I have the list, the roster reveal. Apparently, WWE, there was like, uh, uh, they roster said there was reveal. supposed to be 92. Allegedly. Allegedly. Hopefully, that'd be awesome. But um, they didn't reveal 92. Um, this list is uh, starts with AJ Lee, Alberto Del Rio, <laughs> Bad News Barrett, Batista, Big E, Big Show, Booker T, Bray Wyatt, Brie Bella, Brock Lesnar, Cameron, Cesaro, Chris Jericho, CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Curtis Axel. I know Doug's excited about that. Damian Sandow. Who am I excited about? Curtis Axel. Goddamn right. <laughs> Daniel Bryan, <laughs> Darren Young, Dean Ambrose. Oh, yeah. 
Dolph Ziggler, hey, yo. Eric Rowan, Fandango, That's the bad guys, so the big guys. Gold Dust, <laughs> Hollywood Hulk Hogan, the Big Man, Hulk Hogan, and the Bad Man, Jack Swagger, Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, they're back. Yeah, John Cena, Justin Gabriel, JoJo. Just joking, no, no. Don't uh, lie about <laughs> these things. Kane, <laughs> Kevin I'm Nash. for JoJo. <laughs> Kevin Nash. <laughs> Total Divas Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Kofi Kingston, Luke Harper, Mark Henry, Naomi, Natalia, Nikki Bella, Randy Orton, Ray Mastrio, Ooh. Ric Flair, Woo. Rob Van Dam, yeah. Roman Reigns, R-Truth, Ryback, Santino Morella, Seth Rollins, Shawn Michaels, Sheamus, uh, Two Stings. Two Stings. Yes. Black and White Sting and Classic Surfer Sting. Yes. Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? Summer Rae. Tamina. The Miz. The Rock. The Undertaker. Titus O'Neil. Triple H. Tyson Kidd. Slater Xavier Gator. Woods. Slater Gator. Arba, Arba, Arba. Yeah. Arba. Uh, they also said one of the modes, like, uh, your credit character will go through NXT, so yeah. that's pretty cool. They're going to have an NXT arena, like a, not like a, sh- sorry. Like, not I like full like, sale? Yeah, well, they, something like, that'd be cool. That'd be cool if they put some of the FCW guys in there, but I. Well, I think it was rumored that there might you be. You mean NXT? NXT. Sorry, NXT. <clears throat> but I, I kind of felt like they wouldn't do that, you know? My question know. for you, Tyler, is, um. Are you going to put the tag belts on Slater Gator right off the bat? Or are you going to play some exhibition matches first and then put the tag oh. belts on Slater Gator? Yeah, I'll go to the second one. I'm going to play some exhibition matches. Make then, them work put their on way Sl- up. then put on Slater Gator. They got to work their way up through the ranks. Dude, Slater Gator's going to the top, dude. I think they, uh, I read spoilers and I think they lost to a Hornswoggle and Torito. <laughs> <this week. laughs> But they were totally undefeated before that. Hey, God. there's no shame in that. You saw their fucking WLC matches. Those are tight, <laughs> some tight little matches. Yes, and, uh, and for those of you who are listening on the uh, on the who are the, who are listening to the podcast who have fo- found us through Twitch, uh, I've already reserved and paid off WWE 2K15 for the Xbox 360. Doug so says he's getting it for a PS4. Woo. I haven't reserved it yet, which I want to 360, because 360, 360, because 360. I want to get Sting. And the last few years, if you don't get reserve it through a uh, pay forever for later, and you if you don't get that um, mm. special character you reserve or GameStop or whatever, that won't be a DLC for a long period of time. You mm-hmm. won't get that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So unless you get that, like it'll eventually be on the DLC, like the network or uh, Xbox Live or PS3 or whatever. Mm-hmm. It'll, it just takes a long time. Yep. So. uh I want to play a Sting. So, uh, I would recommend either getting the PlayStation 4 and getting it on there or getting that for the Xbox 360. Well, since I'm not getting a uh, PlayStation 4 for a while, I'm going to get on Xbox 360. 360! That's what I'm talking about. So, hey, so, uh, real quick. Um, we like to joke around and have fun on the show a lot. Yarp. I just want to say there's a lot of crazy, fucked up shit going on in the world right now. I just want you guys out there listening to say stay safe and take care of each other out there. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. Y'all know what the fuck's going on. Y'all stay safe and take care of each other. Y'all. Everybody, take care of each yeah. other. Everybody. Everybody I mean, everywhere, take care of each other and stay safe. I mean, there's stuff mm-hmm. overseas. There's stuff in the United States, stuff in Ferguson. Uh, just a lot of stuff in, like... Things Everyone. in the news. Everyone's like, you'll hear like, hey, so-and-so killed this person or this person yep. got... And like, it's just crazy. People it's are getting just, killed. There's diseases going around right now and just war and... So just... It's a uh, crazy time. So please take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of your neighbor. And, you know, bad times through your life. And uh, if you're listening to us and it's helping out somehow, great. You yeah. Know, if you we'll, see someone who needs a little help, you know... Help them out. Yeah. Don't don't be afraid to to stop. So, uh, but thank you for listening. We certainly do appreciate it. Make sure to check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. You can promote your uh, Twitch. And we're, yeah, we're on Twitch. Uh, well, I do. You. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like you guys yeah, to, to get in over, on one we day. We get on the Twitch. Do something like that. The, the Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. Uh, you know, check us out on twitch.tv slash WNS podcast altogether. You'll find, uh, 
past broadcasts that I've done. I've been trying to do it on Wednesday and Thursday nights since we record the show on Tuesdays. Uh, so Wednesdays and Thursday nights. And if I can get around to it, if I don't have anything going on, I'll try it on like a Saturday or Sunday night or something like that. So, um, so a lot of fun. Um, I like the comments that I've been getting. Some of the people have been checking it out up to 90 followers right now. That's so cool. yeah, it really is. Um, so, you know, if you get some free time on Wednesday or Thursday night, we try, I, or I try to, uh, to make sure that it at least gets known. You have a cool mic. Thank you. Uh, either on, uh, on Twitter and or Facebook, I'll let, let people know when I'm on so you can at least check out the stream. And if you want to set up an account so you can send a little message to me and saying, Hey, keep up the great work or dude, you really sucked at getting that reversal. Uh, because I know I suck at doing that. Um, do that so yeah twitch TV. it's actually entertaining to watch like actually like it's more entertaining I've, than you think yeah because actually i i turned on i was watching you yeah you're watching me yeah well i wasn't watching, watching me you, through a window i was listening to you. a window of the internet yeah yeah uh <laughs> kakaret yes <laughs> our show is on uh stitcher beyond pod and player.fm just search wrestling news source podcast to find us uh, also follow us on Twitter at WNS Podcast. Follow Daniel WNS underscore Daniel. Follow Tyler Tyler underscore Abier. I have follow. To, yeah. Me. Uh, this is random, and I told Daniel and Doug this like so uh, a few weeks ago. I uh, promoted us through a uh, Wind Waker HD. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> threw a bottle out there. So if you have a bottle, we you. Yeah, and I promote us, but. Yeah. I had to like really shorten it down. It was like a hundred characters. Yeah. After that, it wouldn't let me send it. So I was follow like, the WNS podcast. I forgot to put, but I I didn't put a period. Yeah. Didn't put a period. Well, how are they going to know in the tone at the of end, what you're saying? At the it? end. Yeah. One one more thing before we let the show go uh, on the Twitch account. Uh, in case you're wondering what kind of format that I do, I'll do like 30 minutes or you know 30 minutes or so of let's run through the 30 years of WrestleMania. Uh, that usually covers like three, maybe four, depending on what all the tasks are and if I can get them all in the first then go. Then it's right down to the butt stuff. Right down to the butts. That's right. Butts. Uh, after that, I'll do like fantasy bookings. Where, I was going to say fantasy butts. Yeah, fantasy butts. Where the people who are watching the stream, I'll post a trivia question or I'll say, hey, go. Uh, the first person to comment. Uh, either the correct answer or their fantasy matchup, like Stone Cold Steve Austin versus CM Punk, I will put that match together. Uh, you know, and I, I make it to where it's computer versus computer because if I pick a character, odds are that character is going to win. Mm -hmm. So I like to make it fair and you know yeah. equal. So it's computer versus computer fantasy bookings. Let's find out who the best man is. Uh, so anyone who's on the roster, what's really funny is a lot of people comment Bray Wyatt, and I'm like, he's not in the game. <laughs> I would love to have this match. Yeah. I just had the weirdest. Fucking feeling ever like I felt like someone was pulling on my shoulder right now. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. ready, ready. there was no, oh, there was totally no one behind me, but I swear, it's, <laughs> so I felt like someone was pulling on my shoulder just now. That's weird. Yeah, it's totally weird. There's that guy right there. <laughs> oh my god, what's that in that window? So, uh, so yeah. So before uh, before Doug gets taken to the afterworld, thank you all for listening. Uh, sorry, one more question. Did you get any more glitches? Uh. No. This game has a lot of glitches. Trying to avoid, I'm trying to avoid ghost murder over here. Come on. <laughs> We're talking about glitches and like Doug's being like, like his arms being pulled and like he gets like thrown in the we'll corner. Turn around, like, I'll turn around dude. and he'll be gone. And like, Doug? No. So, uh, so yeah. No, I haven't encountered any other glitches at the moment. Well, maybe a couple, but you have to check out the stream in order to find out. I have found a lot. Uh, plug. So, uh, so there you go for the podcast crew. I am Dan O'Hare. Yeah, I'm just trying to stretch it out to an even two hours. Is that what we are doing? No. <laughs> Why would keep you on say going, something? Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. Doug, okay. Freestyle okay. rap, Tyler. Go. Doug, why would you say oh. something like that? Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Tyler. Uh, oh fuck my mic. Freestyle. Go. A bear. Two bear. minutes. Go. Oh, freestyle. Shit, bear. Go. My name is Tyler. A bear. I'm gonna do fine because I'm fine. <laughs> fuck this shit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter if you fucking watch us raw with freestyles <laughs> like that. My skills. Check one, two. You didn't even do like the intro. Yo, yo, this is your boy Tyler A. Bear coming at you. Coming out of the cave for one more round, y'all. It's my that? boy Tyler <laughs> A. Burr. I wish you could like do some effects that can be bear. like <laughs> I could be like uh Oh, I could do a T Pain style. Turn on that auto tuner. <laughs> 
gonna sing you a song. Yeah. So there you go. I'm Tyler Bear. <laughs> I'm Doug. And we will catch you all next week. So close. <laughs>